third straight nationally ranked team here from Pioneer Field. Hello everyone, Brian State as we get set to bring you Tesla and eighth ranked Lenore Rye. It's a Bear team that has won 15 consecutive regular season games and in conference play they've been solid as well. It's a Bear team that will come in one of the best offensively in the nation and also defensively. We'll talk about that coming up here in just a few moments as well. First Pioneer football team, their combined start 19 and 11. That's the record of the teams that they have played. Again, one of the strongest strength of schedules the Pioneers have played in school history. When considering the fact that they play 20th ranked West Alabama, then opened up last week against 16th ranked Wingate, now ranked 14th, and now today against the 8th ranked Lenore Ryan Bears, one of the strongest starts in Pioneer football history. The big reason why the team that is over my goal, the Lenore Ryan Bears, is a team offensively and defensively that ranks in the nation. When you take a look at their start, 5-0, a sizzling start, 15 regular season games dating back to last year. They knocked off newcomer Virginia Wise last week, 63-6, and they have put up 50 points in three of their first five wins this year. They lead the league in both scoring offense and defense. They average 49.8 points a game, which is third in the nation, and their 13.8 points a game allowed is 11th in the nation. And oh, by the way, their running game is pretty stout. That 304 yards for contest, they rank in the top five in the nation. For a Pioneer football team today, it will not be Bryce Moore. It will be Joaquin Palazzo who will get the start today for the Pioneers. Now, he did start day one against the Delta State Statesman and played quite well. And last week, after hole in the opening quarter, Joaquin Colazzo did rally the troops, throwing for 170 yards and a season-best three touchdowns in the game. That included two touchdowns to Torrey Ponder, who also finished with six catches and a career-best 105 yards. But the onus today for this football game will be, how do you stop the Lenore Wright Bear running attack? At 304 yards a game, it will be this crew right here, the defensive line for this Pioneer football team. When you look at Logan Coward and Colton Strickland, so many guys on this team that have been part of this program for the last couple of years. Tesselin does not have a win. For the Norline Bears, the Bears have been able to run at will against Tesla. So the onus today falling on a group of guys that will just have to do their assignment. And the Lyman assignment day, Tushkillum versus Lenore Ryan. We get ready for kickoff. That's just moments away. Stay tuned right here on the Pioneer Sports Network. Don Donnelly, followed by our national anthem. And now, ladies and gentlemen, our invocation. Let us pray. O oh, gracious and most heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you on this glorious day. Bless and protect all student athletes who compete today. Protect them from all harm and injury. In this month of October, we remember those who are battling breast cancer. We also remember those whom we have lost to this dreaded disease. We ask for your blessing upon all cancer survivors, their families, doctors, nurses, and caregivers who provide the healing touch to those afflicted. We ask and beg you to grant us the knowledge and wisdom to cure and eliminate breast cancer once and for all. We ask for these and all things in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen.
So much of life these days is rushing around from one place to another. Sometimes you just want to enjoy the journey on the way to the destination. And part of what makes it a little more enjoyable is an appreciation for the folks who help you get there. At Ingalls, we know that the people who send you on your way are the same ones who keep you coming back. I think you should take it for a spin. Are you serious? <laughs> Ingalls, all the ingredients for family. The first date. Only one chance to make that first impression. Don't worry, this might be new for you, but Ingalls has been there before. From flowers to the freshest ingredients, we have everything you need to put your best foot forward. I'm so sorry. Remember, you can't get to happily ever after without once upon a time. Ingalls, all the ingredients for family. Tusculum University is Tennessee's first university. Born today in the United States will get breast cancer at some point. The good news is that many women can survive breast cancer if it's found and treated early. A mammogram can help find breast cancer early when it's easier to treat. National Breast Cancer Awareness Month and today's Breast Cancer Awareness Game is a chance to raise awareness about the importance of early detection of breast cancer. Please help us make a difference. Spread the word about mammograms and encourage communities, organizations, families, and individuals to get involved. Representing breast cancer survivors today is Tusculum graduate Susan Crum. Susan was diagnosed with breast cancer in July 2013 following a stroke she suffered the year before. But she took a cancer diagnosis and developed a passion to inspire, encourage, and to help others. She started the Susan D. Crumb Foundation in 2014, incorporating the Still Sparking in Pink Fund, which provides financial assistance to those battling breast cancer, especially in Greenville and Greene County. With Susan today is her son, Austin. At this time, we ask all breast cancer survivors to please stand so we may recognize you and thank you for fighting the fight in defeating this disease and one day finding a cure to eliminate breast cancer forever. Ladies and gentlemen, join me in a round of applause for Susan Crum and our breast cancer survivors. Tusculum University is Tennessee's first university. Established in 1794, Tusculum's beautiful campus is nestled in the foothills of the Great Smoky Mountains. Students from 31 states and 15 countries have found a home here. With nearly 60 areas of study, Tusculum can help you pioneer your path to success. Visit www.tusculum.edu or call 423-636-7300 to discover the pioneer experience for yourself. It's fine, it'll be okay, okay? Nobody, nobody cares about the flowers. Who needs flowers at a, a wedding? At Ingalls, we know that the best of plans don't always go according to plan. My best friend's getting married today and the florist never showed. That's why we're always there when you need us. What are their colors? Purple and cream. With smiling faces and helping hands. No one cares, no one cares, you will look great. Flowers are not important. And where is Holly? Uh, have you, any, anyone seen Holly? And although life will be predictably unpredictable. Let's get you to that wedding. A curveball is that much more satisfying. I got the flowers! When you 
knock it out of the park. Oh my gosh, <laughs> So when the plan goes out the window and improvisation becomes the order of the day, just remember, that's where the best of memories are made. All right, they're ready for us. True story. Ingalls, all the ingredients for family. family. Food's here! What's it mean to you? To us, it means the people you care about, look out for, and yeah, love. Even if you'd never let them hear you say it. Hey, you're eating hummus? What's wrong with hummus? Here at Ingalls, we have everything you need to gather around the table and give each other a hard time. Because that's what families do. Ingalls, all the ingredients for family. Hello, my name is Jacob Faith and I'm the Dean of the College of Business at Tusculum University. I'm proud to share with you that the programs in the College of Business received accreditation through ACBSP in December of 2018. The Accreditation Council for Business Schools and Programs accredits business schools and programs worldwide. This accreditation elevates our programs to the top programs worldwide. We are in the season and 3-0 and in the conference. Off to another sizzling start where they've won 15 consecutive regular season games. So everyone, Brian Staten to be joined by Joe Bird coming up, a pioneer team that is in desperate win for a victory, but today that victory opportunity uh, might be a little bit more difficult than it has been all season long. This is a very good Lenore Ride team. Let's meet some of those impact players for the Lenore Ride Bears. First, we'll start on offense, and on the offensive line is Jason Poe, a 6'1 junior out of Fitzgerald, Georgia, and Fitzgerald High School. He won the Jacobs Blocking Trophy last year, which is the best offensive of Lyman in the conference, named first team all conference, first team all region, and also an all American. And he'll line up at right guard today for the Lenore Ride Bears. Ian Brinson out of Moultrie, Georgia, Bryce Jefferson from Atlanta, Logan Kessler from Buford, and Ronnie Clifton from Fort Royal, Virginia, along that offensive line. Tight end is Drake Starks out of Ringgold, Georgia. The wide out is Derek Young, the junior from Raleigh, North Carolina, a couple of touchdowns last week. And the run and Demarius Hampton, the junior out of Carthage. North Carolina. Amin Stevens is the fullback from Savannah, Georgia. Jaquay Mitchell had a banner day last year against the Pioneers out of Bailey, North Carolina. And the signal caller is Grayson Willingham, the 6'1 junior out of Matthews, North Carolina. All he's doing this year is throwing touchdowns, no interceptions, and he has yet to be sacked on the season for the Lenore Rye Bears, telling a little bit about what that offensive front is doing. Now, defensively, it's Kyle Duggar. It's his show. He is the guy that controls basically what the defense does. He's their captain. He, well, he is their voice leader. The captain for this team is Landon Scott. But Kyle Duggar does just about anything you can do. And he returns punts. He was named the National Player of the Week on special teams in D2Football.com for his two touchdowns he had last week in the first quarter. Ivan Milliken from Greensboro, North Carolina, Javor Smith from Dry Branch, Georgia, Kyle Duggar from Fayetteville, Georgia, and Landon Scott from Moultrie, Georgia in the secondary for the Bears. And up front, they're strong as well. They are led by Jaquan Artis, the 6'2 senior out of Kingston, North Carolina, and Dan Luba, all-conference out of Harrisburg, North Carolina. For the Tusculum Pioneers today, a lot of onus falls on them. They must get the running game going against a team that 
is stingy. They allow just 67 yards per game on the ground, and they only allow 13.8 points per contest as well, both first in the South Atlantic Conference. So Kevion Broadwater out of Gaffney, along with Tremaine Chapman out of New Orleans, Louisiana. They'll be challenged. Kristen Culture at right tackle from Thompson, Georgia, and Brandon Harrison from Decatur, Mississippi. Bailey Herring is the center out of Merritt Island, Florida for the Pioneers. The wideouts today will be A.J. Bellinger from Green Cove Springs, Florida, Jacob Moss from Orange City, Florida, and Tory Ponder from Moultrie, Georgia. The tight end is Carter Mangle out of Bogart, Georgia. Tailback is going to be Jordan Shippey out of Gaffney and Joaquin Colazzo from Melbourne, Florida. We'll get the start for the injured Bryce Moore. Defensively, it is Ivan Hogan's show. As he approaches 200 tackles for his career, he'll need to be very sound today, as will this Pioneer defense on an alignment assignment day. Drew Cronick and the Lenore Ryan Bears. He's 17 and two all time at LR. And for Jerry Odom in his fourth year, 15 and 21, they go head to head. It is Florida, Jerry Odom, and Georgia, Drew Cronick, taking on each other today as LR and Tusculum square off for the 23rd time. Joe and I return with kickoff right after we thank our sponsors here on the Pioneer Sports Network. Pioneer Football is brought to you by your Greenville Light and Power System, Wash Depot, Hometown Realty and Auctions, the Red, White, and Blue Marathon Quick Stop Markets, Greenville Federal Bank, Terry's Flooring, Gateway Ford, Lincoln Nissan, Corley's Pharmacy, Andrew Johnson Bank, and now Joe Bird, Justin Jeffers, and the voice of the Pioneers, Brian Staten. Pioneer Football kicks off. Brian State and Joe Bird and Game Station Engineer, the executive producer of the Pioneer Sports Network, is Nathan Hummer. The Pioneers win the toss, defer to the second half. The LR Bears will receive. Jaquay Mitchell is back deep along with Kyle Duggar. And if the Pioneers kick to Kyle Duggar today, Joe, I'm guaranteeing that the person who's kicking off won't be kicking off <laughs> after that. Uh, a little overcast day here, a little wind, anticipating a little rain. Thought it would come a little earlier. It might come during the afternoon, though. And so it'll be Anjuski set to kick it away. And it is a foot to leather here from Pioneer Field. And they will kick away. And a short kick that'll be fielded at the 20-yard line. And the Pioneers are there to defend it, 25 up to the 26-yard line. And that's where the LR Bears will start first and 10. So anticipated that, no question about it. And a penalty flag actually comes in right at the end of the play as well. So that's most likely going to be unsportsmanlike on one side or the other, Brian. We saw a little bit of action between the two as they were coming out onto the field for warm-ups. And so I guess the referees are setting the tone early. Yeah, again, they just don't want this getting out of hand early because it did appear that way. So a late hit on the Pioneers. And we saw a lot of that last week, Joe. A lot of just undisciplined stuff that you don't normally see out of Coach Odom's teams. Yeah, and it's uh, spilled already over here. We haven't had the first snap of the game. It was on the kickoff return. So now LR is going to get the ball spotted up at the 42-yard line. So first and 10 for the Bears from there. An unsportsmanlike late hit on Tusculum. And, again, you just – can't have just the, the those amount of penalties. They aided so much last week. First carry of the game right up the middle. Again, Amin Stevens across the 45 up to the 46. He'll gain four, and LR wants to win first down. Actually, they want to be second down in about three to five to open up the playbook, and, Joe, they'll go with pace. All right, and that's uh, just the hallmark of this team, and that's why they win the way they do. Second down and six from the 46-yard line. Willingham to pass. A little pump fake going deep. He's got a man all alone. 25, 20, 10, 5 end zone. Derek Young had never broke stride. It was a little pump fake, and Willingham burns the Pioneer secondary deep. Touchdown, LR. Just seconds into the game. You know, I don't even know that I would classify that, that as burning the, the secondary because that would mean that the secondary had to be involved in the play. There was no Tuscan <laughs> players around. The burn there took place whenever they the two sides lined up on offense and defense. So just uh, second play, very similar to last year. Jaquay Mitchell opened up the game last year. The first play offensively went 65 yards for a score. Here they go big for a score right off the bat and all ball to attempt the point which is up, and the point is good. The Bears, eighth in the country, offensively on the board. Family. Food's here! 
What's it mean to you? you to us, it means the people you care about, look out for, and yeah, love. Even if you'd never let them hear you say it. Hey, you're eating hummus? What's wrong with hummus? Here at Ingalls, we have everything you need to gather around the table and give each other a hard time. Because that's what families do. Ingalls. All the ingredients. Come and see my popsy at Terry's Flooring on Kaiser Boulevard. This is South Atlantic Conference football. Tusculum versus Lenore Rhyme. With the voice of the pioneers, Brian Staten and... 14-23 to play, and the Bears are on the board on a 54-yard touchdown strike from Willingham to uh, Derek Young. Uh, that will be his longest catch of the year, his fifth touchdown reception of the year as well. So the uh, Bears to kick it away, and will they be kicking it off to Thurlow Wilkins? We'll find out. Jefferson Norwood, foot to leather, and it's a short kick, and they're not going to kick to him either. It'll be fielded on a fair catch at the 27-yard line by an up-back for the uh, Pioneers, and that's Colton Stewart, a defensive end out of Charlotte, Tennessee. So first and 10 for the Pioneers at the 28. It's going to be an uneventful kickoff day if every time one of these teams kicks off, it's going to be short like that. <laughs> well, they actually say the 27. Ponder and Moss will go to the right side. It'll be Bellinger to the near side. Joaquin Colazzo getting his second start. He started against Delta State on the season opener on a Thursday night. Carter Mangle, the tight end, lines up as an H-back, back back into the backfield on the left side. Jordan Shippey is on the left shoulder. They'll hand it off to him. Not a whole lot of running room right up the middle as Quentin Hayes, a junior out of Powder Springs, Georgia, comes up with the stop. The team's second leading tackler now tied for the team lead with 28 tackles. Shippey tried to go through an area just to the right of what would be center, and there was no hole there. Pickup of a yard, so second down and nine for the Pioneer. Right, it's a bear team that, again, just is very stingy against the run. Don't give up yards, but today the Pioneers must must be able to run the football, and I'm not going to say Jordan has to have a banner day, but they have to be able to run the ball. He gains a yard at second down and nine. Quick receiver slant is complete to Torrey Ponder, who will take it up to the 35-yard line before he's taken down. It'll bring up a third down and two for the Pioneers, and another key today to victory is convert on third down. And right now, we didn't see that as, as much as we needed last week, so you've got third down and two. Got to do something here because you obviously don't want LR's offense back on the field this quickly. So third down and two coming up for the Pioneers. Joaquin Colazzo will step back into the gun. Long count with the snap, back to pass, and he's lost the football, and Dan Luba knocked it away from Colazzo. It's fumbled and recovered by the Bears, it would appear, and I think Luba was the one that fell on top of it. He created the, the fumble, he recovered the fumble, and it's a first and 10 for the Bears. I don't even think he had to follow on it, Brian, because from my vantage point, it looked like he essentially just stripped the ball right out of Colazzo's hand. Colazzo dropped back in a, a passing nice. motion, and the defender just came through, knocked it out, and received the gift right there in midair. Pioneers' fourth loss fumble of the year. Of course, they lost three against Newberry. The first fumbles they had lost. That's their 11th turnover of the season. And now the Bears with the short field leading at 7 nothing. Willingham will cut under center for LR. It's a long toss to the left side to the 20. And at the 15, Nick Jackson is going to bring down the carrier, Jace Jordan, the junior out of Mount Zion, Georgia, who's just ridiculous, 13.1 yard per average carry. Going back to that last offensive play for the Pioneers, I was watching the replay, and I was right, Luba just knocked it right out of Colosso's hands, and it just went, and the ball never touched the turf. First down and 10 for the Bears. They will scrimmage from the 12, and again, out of this wing T style, running to the right, now back to the left, and a nice job by the defensive line this time to hem in Ryan Carter, the sophomore out of Ringgold, Georgia. Good penetration by the Pioneer defensive front. I believe it was uh, Jackson Cawthon the one who read that play very well, just shot the gap and, and was able to come up with a big play for the Tuscan defense. C.J. Bartley helping as well defensively. He's had a nice rebound after a slow start to the year for Bartley now to 15 tackles. Willingham to roll the pocket, looking outside for Young. It's complete at the seven. He gets it down to the five-yard line and a blindside block that's not called. Down to the four creates third down and two. All right, they, they do have room. They can uh, 
they can get two yards, get a first down, and not have to get into the end zone. Right, right now, Tuscan's defense got its work cut out. So 7 nothing. LR trying to take advantage of a Pioneer miscue. On the second play from scrimmage, they score on a long pass, 54 yards for the score, and then – they respond by defensively getting a turnover. Now, Willingham will come out in formation as a wideout. They will put Jordan in the quote-unquote wildcat. Jordan with the carry right to the goal line, puts his head down, crosses the line, touchdown LR. Touchdown Jace Jordan, scores his fourth touchdown of the year. Jordan didn't have any problems there. He snapped the ball, put, did you say put his head down, just followed his blockers right across the goal line. Goes right behind the All-American and Jason Poe there at right guard. Not a huge guy, 6'1", 255, but he's the Jacobs blocking award winner from a year ago in the conference, meaning that he was the best all-around offensive lineman in the South Atlantic Conference last year. So it will be all ball to attempt the point. And holding will be Michael Owen. The kick is up, and the kick is good. We go to a break, and the Bears have jumped all over the Pioneers. Second consecutive week, Tusculum finds themselves down 14-0 in the first quarter. 11-28 to play here in this opening quarter. It's the LR Bears. Hello, my name is Jacob Fate, and I'm the Dean of the College of Business at Tusculum University. I'm proud to share with you that the programs in the College of Business received accreditation through ACBSP in December of 2018. The Accreditation Council for Business Schools and Programs accredits business schools and programs worldwide. This accreditation elevates our programs to the top programs worldwide. We are in Grange County. Was good. 11:28 to play here in this opening quarter, and All Ball will be actually kicking off, and not Norwood as previously thought. So it will be All Ball to kick the junior out of Tallahassee, Florida. Gamillion stands at about the 14-yard line, and another high short kick, and Gamillion will race up field it at the 30, and then be taken down at about the 34-yard line. Special teams tackle was made from this near sideline by DeAndre Lester, a freshman out of Washington, Georgia. First and 10 for the Pioneers at the 33-yard line. Off offense for Tuscum has to get something going now, Brian, because you're already down 14 to nothing. We've really not even played, you know, four minutes worth of football, and you don't see any real signs of LR's offense letting up. So. No. You definitely have got to try to put some points on the board here. Got to score, no question about it. Four plays, 23 yards that last drive, a minute 23 off the clock. The first drive, two plays, 58 yards, 37 seconds off the clock. 14 to nothing LR. And this will be a running play for Jordan Shippey, and he might get a yard up to about the 34-yard line. Right there was Quentin Hayes once again. He blew it up in the backfield. He got a lot of help from Jaquan Artis. We probably call his name quite a bit today. Team leading tackler for loss with 12 coming into the game. Second uh, offensive series here where the Pioneers have started with a gain of one on first down. So second down and nine coming up for the Pioneers. Artis last year finished second in the conference with 11 sacks as well. So he's just a fiend behind the line of scrimmage. The Pioneers will go empty backfield. Joaquin Colazzo in the back, and here come the Bears. They bring everybody. Steps away from the blitz and pass complete to Deshaun Davis up to the 39-yard line. So a short gain will make it third down and five for the Pioneers. That was a nice little move by Colazzo there because LR had uh, some of their defensive backs putting the heavy pressure on him. He made one little sidestep to get to clear up uh, Alley to throw the ball. So say third down and four. It will be Arthur in the slot far side with A.J. Bellinger. Moss to the near side with Torrey Ponder. And Shippey back in the backfield along with Joaquin Colazzo. He'll line up on his right shoulder. Four down linemen this time for the Bears. They don't show blitz. And Colazzo to pass. Steps up in the pocket and airmails one over A.J. Bellinger as he was moving his feet. And he threw it over Bellinger incomplete. It'll be fourth down for the Pioneers who trail 14 to nothing. Bellinger was coming down. He was right about the 50-yard line. Colazzo's ball went 10 yards over his head and hit at the LR40. 
Bryce Moore, who came out, started throwing the passes a few times here this this afternoon, and then got the pads off and got checked out again. And probably will be out another week, is what they were saying, based on the way that uh, concussion has gone for him. It's, he's really had a hard time with that. So fourth down, snap back rugby style this time and they'll kick it away from Duggar it doesn't matter he goes back there at the 20 lets it roll around and he's probably wishing he'd pick that thing up he picks it the pioneers touch it up at the 10 yard line and Kyle Duggar had an opportunity to return it but there is a penalty flag all the way back inside the 30 at around the 26 yard line so we'll check the flag with 9.58 to play but Duggar that's surprising it really surprises me because an All-American returner thought he may have picked that up around the 20. Another thing that surprises me. I can play this over on course of my conduct on the kicking team number 12. That's a 15-yard penalty at the end of the run. So unsportsmanlike against Tusculum, and it came after the play. First date. Only one chance to make that first impression. Don't worry. This might be new for you, but Ingalls has been there before. From flowers to the freshest ingredients, we have everything you need to put your best foot forward. I'm so sorry. Remember, you can't get to happily ever after without once upon a time. Ingalls. All the ingredients for family. So first and 10 for the Lenoride Bears, leading 14 to nothing out of the timeouts and a penalty on the Pioneers to give, move the ball from the 10 all the way up to the 25. This will be Young on a carry, a bit of a jet sweep. Good pursuit by the Pioneer defense that time, limiting that to just a yard on the play. It'll bring up second down and nine. I still don't understand the penalty, Brian. Uh, we watched the replay. I didn't see any anything going on, I guess. Something did, but I just certainly, I don't know what it was. It wasn't in the area of where the penalty flag was thrown. Isaiah Dunn, who's been out the last couple of games, in there with that stop for the uh, Pioneers. And quickly to the line of scrimmage come the Bears again. They go with tempo in this wing T style and just run it so well. Willingham will move back into the gun. Stevens will be on his right shoulder, and they'll hand it off to Stevens up the middle for a big gainer. 30, 35, 40, and 50, and down by Isaiah Dunn inside the 45 to the 42-yard line as Amin Stevens with the big run for the Lodoride Bears. Gash the Pioneers uh, again moved the ball all the way down to uh, the, the, the offense is trying to get set before the referee even gets the ball placed. They go quick, and they want it right under center. will be Willingham. He'll hand it off after Amin Stevens had his longest run of the season. This will be a short game of just three for Stevens. We're going to bring up second down and seven. Right, uh, not what uh, when you're the defense and you're you know your offense is struggling to gain three yards. Whenever you say the other team has got a short gain of three, yeah. Uh, just a, an offense that is a well-oiled machine. Drew Cronick came in, just made a few simple adjustments to this offensive game plan and has made it a national juggernaut. This will be Jace Jordan, and the penalty flag three or four flags will come in as Ivan Hogan's 
trying to wrap up Jordan and did so by the face mask, which will be another 15-yard penalty against the Pioneers. Uh, penalties, they've start, they hurt, hurt the Pioneers at the very first play of the game on the kickoff, and it's just gotten worse. 14 to nothing, Lenore Ryan leading with 8.34 to play here in this opening quarter. Our referee is Todd Boyd today. And that'll go against the Pioneers. Ryan Smith, our umpire, Greg McDade, our linesman, Matt Skeen, the line judge, and Jeff McCroskey, the side judge. The field judge is Homar Ramirez, and the back judge is Trey Williams. That'll move the ball inside the 30 to the 24-yard line, actually. So after Amin Stevens gets his longest rush of the season, putting the Bears in at Pioneer territory, another 15-yard penalty, and the Bears are back in business close to the red zone. This will be a handoff running left side this time for not much will be Bradley, a redshirt freshman from Waycross, Georgia, will actually be hemmed up behind the line of scrimmage for a loss of a yard on the play. The officials call a timeout as well. What has Tuscan had now? Three 15-yard penalties? Three penalties, 45 yards on the, pen, on the Pioneers. So second down for LR. After the brief stop, and they send a man in motion, Mitchell, and then they stop and look over to the sideline to get the new call. The clock runs with eight minutes to play in the quarter. Mitchell goes back in motion. They turn around and hand it off to him, and he'll be sliced down at about the 24-yard line. And again, good pursuit by the Pioneer defense this time. Josh Forrest over there with Jackson Cawthon and Isaiah Dunn. Brings up third down and ten for the Bears. Tuscombe's defense just – they read the play well, flooded to, to their own right side and was able to stop the – off the Bears right at the line of scrimmage. So third down, 10 at the 24. Willingham back in the gun with Stevens offset to his right shoulder. He'll roll the pocket to the near side. Looking, throwing, pass will be complete at the 15 to the 14. D. Alford making the stop. And on the catch will be Ryan Carter right at the sticks in the line of the game. What a great throw by Willingham. It was, and Alford did a good job of not allowing any yards after the catch, but unfortunately for the Pioneers, it was just enough for the first down. Usually when you roll the pocket to one side, you shorten the field. It helps the defense, but Willingham just threw a dart. And Willingham, again, what he has been able to do this season, his completion percentage, 62%, leading the league, creating another first and 10 for the Bears at the 14, already up 14 to nothing in this first quarter. Bears will adjust their offensive line set, go strong to the left side. They will hand it off, and uh, this another one of the talented running backs for the uh, Bears. This will be Warren Bell, the redshirt freshman, with the carry, and he gains a, maybe two yards down to about the 12-yard line. The way they shift that line, I, I swear I don't see how that's not a false start because every time they come up to the line, they appear, to me it's looking like set, and then basically everybody on the field just picks a new spot. <laughs> We're going to start from here. Willingham under center. They adjust that offensive line once again. This time they go to the strong side. Jace Jordan with some blockers at the 10 to the 5 and into the end zone. But this time the blockers may have done so illegally and a likely hold down field to negate what appears to be a bear touchdown. And penalty flag thrown right at the 5-yard line. And I think Jace Jordan knew it as he was into the end zone, a guy that's averaging 13.1 yards per carry this season. It's tremendous, the junior out of Mount Zion, Georgia. He comes from Reinhardt College, which is where Drew Cronick came from to take over the head coaching job. So we got a personal foul blocked below the waist against the Bears. <laughs> Are they going to take it back? Yeah, they are. Okay. So ball they'll take the ball back to the 20. Yeah, I was going to say, because it happened right at the five-yard line. If you watch the replay, you can see it pretty clearly there. So five, knock off the 15, goes back to the 20. Bears already closing in on 120 yards of offense, 130 yards of offense to the Pioneers, two here in the first quarter. So Willingham shouting out the instruction to the line. It will be Stevens on his right shoulder. Now that wing set, Young will go in motion. Stevens will get the carry, brought down by Jackson Cawthon at the 19-yard line. And nice job by Jackson to get into the backfield, bring down Stevens after a gain of a yard. So third down and 16 coming up for the Bears. That's at least twice that Cawthon has done that today, Brian. Read the play just incredibly well and shot, shot the holes and 
got them made to stop behind the line of scrimmage. So uh, Jace Jordan will be out there along with Rajah Bradley for the Bears. He'll be the feature back, the A back, behind now to the left side of Willingham, who will step back into the gun. A four wide out set for the Bears. And they'll just loft it into the end zone and leaping for the interception taken away by the Pioneers. Tusculum gets the pick in the end zone as Malik Goodman was back there. Great position, nice job reading the play, and the Pioneers get their first turnover of the game against LR. Big swing for the Pioneers there because it very well could have been 21 nothing lead for LR. The penalty brought it back, and then that allowed uh, Tusculum to get the interception in the end zone and take the ball away. All region, Malik Goodman with his third career interception. 165 tackles for his career. So the Pioneers have it first and 10 at the 20. They turn away the bear threat this time and now have it first and 10 at their 20. Two wideouts to the far side will be Bellinger and they'll adjust the tight ends. Both tight ends are in, Mangle and Hunley. Shippy in the backfield for Joaquin Colazzo who comes under center. They hand it off to Shippy and he gets away from Kyle Duggar for a moment and is taken down for a loss back at the 19. And Kyle Duggar in run support, recognizing the play, comes up to make the stop for the Bears, second down and 11. Not the uh, best setup for a play there, Brian, because quite honestly it looked like Shippy was actually handed the ball seven yards behind the line of scrimmage. So he had to get essentially a close to a first down before he even got to the line of scrimmage. So that's... Don't give yourself extra work. I understand you want to give them a running head start, but you've got to create a hole for that to happen, too. And uh, just no running room for the uh, Pioneers that time. Colazzo out of the gun to pass. Stepping up with time. Now finding a man open across the middle is complete. And if he's able to stay on his feet, De uh, Deshaun Davis has a touchdown. But he'll go to a knee down to the 39, first and 10 for the Pioneers. A hey, small bite, not get the touchdown, but at least we did get a first down here for today. So now that first step in the right direction. First and 10 for the Pioneers, their first of the game. Moss will go into the slot far side with A.J. Bellinger, the wideout. Chavis Williams to the near side. Mangle, the tight end, is lined up to the right side. I'd like to see him get involved today in the passing game in some way. Jordan Shippey is on the uh, left shoulder of Colazzo to pass. This pass is defended nicely and knocked away by the Bears' corner, Marcus Rosser the junior from Atlanta, and it will bring up second down and 10, looking for Chavis Williams. Rosser made a, a good play. He, he was kind of beaten on a play, but he dived forward and knocked the ball out of, uh, of midair. Rosser, the backup in the two deep out of San Diego Mesa Community College, in for Ivan Milliken, at least this series. Second down and 10 for the Pioneers. Bunch set at the line of scrimmage. Two wide outs either side. Shippy on the right shoulder. Now Bellinger will line up wide to the right side. They'll stay with four wide outs across the formation as they spread it out. Colazzo steps up in the pocket. He'll go down. Be sacked by Dan Luba all the way back to the 33-yard line. And Colazzo just didn't feel the pressure from behind or he probably gets rid of the ball downfield. They officially spot the ball at the 34, so that was a loss of five. Pioneers now have the ball third and 15. Luba just getting great penetration again. It's a Bear team that came in with 18 sacks as a team this year. Pioneers had given up 18 sacks as a team this year and only collected two. And the Bear offensive line has not allowed a sack against Willingham all season or any Bear quarterback for that matter. So third down and 15, the Bears will put five, now six in the box. They'll show blitz and they'll bring them all. Colazzo is in trouble. And he's just going to let it go. And that will be incomplete. Bellinger was in the vicinity. And he did get it across the line of scrimmage. But he threw it basically to no one in particular as he was just trying to let it go. And the line judge comes over to say Bellinger was in the vicinity. So it is fourth down. That might be the biggest benefit of the doubt I've ever seen a Tusculum team get because to not say it was intentional grounding is given, given the Pioneers the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> So Duggar will drift back deep. I bet he picks this one up, and it just depends on uh, where uh, Cantrell punched the ball away. And he did a nice job punting it away the last time. That rugby-style kick, and the Bears didn't even come after it because they want to give a chance for their All-America punt returner to get a chance to return one. Bit of a high snap. This one will be angled to the far side. Duggar anticipating going to the far side. He does pick this one up, and he'll be dragged down by a shirt tail 
at about the 38-yard line. He's a tough guy to bring down, and the Pioneers were able to do that. It's Ryan McIntyre who makes the stop. It brings up first and 10 for the Bears. Yeah, Bears going to get the ball at their own 38 whenever everything's said and done, maybe the 37. So the Bears, who have the uh, first down, have the ball back, and they also have the lead of 14 to nothing. There's 321 left here in this first quarter of action. Tuscaloma has thrown for 32 yards on the day, three of six for Colazo. Willingham's three for four, 72 yards into score. And they've run, run Lenore Ryan for 65 yards, and the long was Amin Stevens, his long of the season of 31 yards. This will be Jace Jordan on a, a give to the, le to the left side, and the Pioneers were there to pick it up on that right side of the defensive front. That's C.J. Bartley for the Pioneers. Pioneers are without one of their um, defensive front men, Logan Cowart. Not exactly sure what was going on, but I did see him have to make his way into the locker room just a second ago. Just a guy who has been injured his whole career here at Tusculum. And he's dealt with some hamstring injuries this season for the Pioneers. Second down and nine. Obviously, he's really pound for pound, one of our strongest defensive linemen there is. Willingham rolling the pocket. He's in trouble, and he throws it downfield. This one will be incomplete. Good coverage in the secondary. Good pursuit by the Pioneers as well as Willingham passes off the mark. It's third down and nine for the Bears. Right now would be a good time for a solid stop for the defense to hold the Bears here and force Lenore Ryan to punt. Just more personnel that comes in for LR in that backfield. Coming into the uh, – in the back is Warren Bell this time. Jaquay Mitchell is in there in a slot. They'll go four wideouts in the formation for the Bears. Willingham will be out of the gun and take the snap third and nine. Pressure up the middle. Pass across the middle is incomplete. Ivan Hogan's in coverage as the pass was intended for Saheem Brooks, the junior from Hanahan, South Carolina, or Charleston. And it's fourth down, and the Bears will punt. That's yeah, uh, another positive for the Pioneer defense. They, f they fell behind 14 to nothing just right out of the gate, and now they have been kind of holding and giving the offense opportunities to pull Tuscan back into it. Just going to have to get it started sooner rather than later. Michael Owens come in to punt, 37.9-yard average for this punt team for the uh, Lenoride Bears as Owen – Punting just for the 12th time this season. Good snap. And Owens punt to D. Alford, who runs up to field it at the 27-yard line. Gets a seam at the 30. Penalty flag down back at the 30 as he crosses the 35 into the 36-yard line. And is taken down on special teams by Demian Williams, the freshman from Waynesboro, Georgia. And we'll check the flag, likely to be on the Pioneers. Yeah, was a situation where that ball came through. Might as well go ahead and start stepping it off. So the Pioneers will be penalized likely for the fourth time. One penalty against the Bears, and every penalty has been a 15-yard penalty in the game. Well, you know, sometimes you can say that at least they're not silly mistake penalties. So uh, the 10-yard penalty moves the Pioneers back to the 20. So Tusculum trailing 14 to nothing with 2.21 left here in this opening quarter. They get a three and out on the Bears for the uh, first time in the game. Jordan Shippey's run three times for a yard. Joaquin Colazzo twice, minus 17. As the Pioneers have minus 16 yards rushing so far in the game. And already a team in the LR Bears that very stingy against the run, proving why. Moss will go in motion, now round behind Joaquin Colazzo and throw out of the backfield, and this will be a loss of about three or four when you throw five yards behind the line of scrimmage, and then you have the Lenoron Bears as disciplined as they are defensively. They'll make the stop for a loss of four. It springs up second down and 14. Yeah, we've seen that many times over the years, and it still gets my goat every time whenever you have a pass completion for a loss of significant yardage. Amari Houston on the stop, the junior from Fountain in South Carolina. So back to the 17, we'll call it second down and 13 for the Pioneers. Ponder and Moss to the far side. A.J. Bellinger comes to the near side along with Deshaun Davis. New back in the backfield will be Maurice Gamillion for the Pioneers. Colazzo will light up in the shotgun. Ponder in motion. Colazzo with the snap, under pressure, he's sacked all the way back at the 11-yard line as flying in from his 
linebacker position for the LR Bears this time. And a guy who has been there basically all over the place today is Quentin Hayes, freshman out of Altman, Georgia. Ball spotted at the 10, so that brings up third down 20 yards for Tuscan. They list Hayes as a defensive end. He can pretty much just line up wherever he wants to out of Powder Springs, Georgia. I apologize. So third down and 20 for the Pioneers, trailing 14 to nothing. And the running game is going nowhere for Joaquin Colazzo. Minus 24 yards. He's been sacked three times. Colazzo under pressure again. Short pass to Jacob Moss. He's got some blockers in front of him. Makes a couple of guys miss and does well to get four yards out of it, even though they did have blocking. But LR just gets all 11 guys to the football, and it will be fourth down for the Pioneers. Just a solid, solid team, Lenore Ryan. Um, we've talked about this several times. Of any team in the South Atlantic Conference, they've probably had the easiest time recruiting, getting the players that they want, and getting a lot of them just because of the location of the school, the resources yeah. they have. At Hickory, a beautiful city, I think. Yeah. And uh, putting some money into the school as well. High snap for Cantrell, who comes down with it, kicks it away from Duggar, who cannot recover it or field it, and he just watches it roll. Actually, it stays in bounds across the 50, 45, 40, and out of bounds at the 39-yard line. So a very nice punt by Cantrell, and he's kind of using this little rugby-style kick, and it's been very effective today. Here's another time Pioneer's getting the benefit of the doubt because uh, one of the Tuscan players just absolutely floored one of the Bears from behind, knocked him five, six yards down the field. And of all the times that we've ever seen blocks in the back, if that one is, <laughs> I don't know what it was. Watch this. Boop. Yep. Get out of the way. So a good punt for the uh, Pioneers with two seconds to play here in this opening quarter. The LR Bears will come out after the Andrew Cantrell 46-yard punt. First and 10 at the 39 for LR. Now can the Pioneer defense get another stop? That is going to be the question much of this day. Mitchell will go in motion. They'll toss it out to Jace Jordan, 40, 50, and out of bounds into Pioneer territory at the 45-yard line. That will be the end of the first quarter. Jace Jordan continues to run roughshod over just about anybody he plays. At the end of one, it's eighth rank, Lenoron 14, and the Tusculum Pioneer. Much of life these days is rushing around from one place to another. Sometimes you just want to enjoy the journey on the way to the destination. And part of what makes it a little more enjoyable is an appreciation for the folks who help you get there. At Ingalls, we know that the people who send you on your way are the same ones who keep you coming back. I think you should take it for a spin. Are you serious? <laughs> Ingalls, all the ingredients for family. Yards rushing in the game. Bears will hand it off to Amin Stevens up the middle in uh, the defensive line. Alignment assignment week doing their job. Devin Woodson was there along with Jackson Coffin. It'll bring up a second down and 10 from just inside the 45-yard line. Those other games today, Brian Marshall's at UNC Pembroke in a non-conference game. That game kicked off at 1 o'clock. Uh, two others, Newberry uh, playing at home today, hosting Virginia Wise at 4. 
Willingham back to pass under pressure. He throws it as he had a fistful of C.J. Bartley who comes up with the quarterback hurry, forcing Willingham to get rid of it. Pass incomplete intended for Derek Young. Going to bring up third down and ten. And Wingate is at home kicking off tonight at 6 p.m. hosting Limestone. C.J. Bartley. They got those lights and they like using them. I'm telling you, they, they're going to play night games at Wingate. So lining up to the right side will be Sahim Brooks. And coming to the near side, Ryan Carter for the LR Bears. They move Jace Jordan in the slot to the near side. And in that backfield, Jordan now will go in motion across the formation. Willingham to pass, steps up with some time, delivers the pass complete at the sticks and complete into the hands of the aforementioned Sahim Brooks inside the 35 to the 33-yard line. First and 10 Bears who hurry to the line. <laughs> they are. They're running around so fast, they're hitting each other, trying to get in spots. They hand it off and are right up the middle, trying to get the quick hitter to Rajah Bradley, who is taken down after a gain of about five in the Pioneers. Again, they got uh, another injury on the play. Down actually to the 26-yard line goes Bradley on that carry. Cawthon, who has had a banner day. And that is uh, on the ground, the aforementioned Logan Cowart. He is down. He went into the locker room, came back out. Now he's on the field on, on the ground. And Cowart has tried to give it a go, but has really had a tough go of it all season long. It was a gain of seven on the play for the uh, Pioneers or pardon me, for the Bears. Each and every Monday during football season, join me with Pioneer Coach. is a proud supporter of Tusculum University Athletics. We thank Applebee's for their fine service and their pregame meal for the press box. So Coward has to be helped off the field. Not a whole lot of pressure on that right leg. And Willingham and the offense to come right back out, facing second down and three at the 26-yard line. Willingham will run the option to the near side. A great block to spring Jaquay Mitchell. Mitchell will cross the 20 down to the 15-yard line, wherefore he'll be taken down there by Chris Matthews. It'll bring up a first and 10 for the Bears. That's a couple of big plays Matthews have had, uh, trailing the runners to the sidelines and forcing them out of bounds and probably what were touchdown saving tackles. Willingham quickly to the line of scrimmage. They move Mitchell in motion, handed off to Amin Stevens, and uh, standing in the way was Solomon Hunter that time for the Pioneers. The Cisco College transfer, the graduate transfer out of San Antonio, Texas. It'll be a gain of three, bring up second. I make that, uh, yeah, three, second down and seven. Second down, Bears. Before you can even get out the down and distance, the Bears are ready to go. With the snap under center will be Willingham, and now they'll turn and look back to the uh, sideline to get the actual play. And the new feature back is Warren Bell lining up behind Willingham, who comes under center. Jace Jordan on the right side. And this time, they'll roll Willingham out of the pocket, look toward the corner of the end zone. This pass is incomplete, intended for Sahim Brooks, the junior from Hanahan, South Carolina, and it's third down. Play well drawn up by the Bears, but just not executed the best in the world by the offense. Could have easily resulted in another Lenore Ryan touchdown, fortunately for Tusculum. The ball was just not thrown exactly where they needed it to be. So Tusculum. Needs to get off the field on third down because the Bears do such a great job all year long on third downs. 60% of the time, 57% of the time, they have been able to convert. They're just efficient. Jordan is in the backfield, and before the snap, I think Jerry Odom decided he didn't like something, so he's going to call a timeout.
obviously going to help those numbers. Out of the Pioneer timeout, it will be the Bears coming, facing third down and seven from the Pioneer 12-yard line. Willingham with a little quick hitch outside to Amin Stevens with daylight at the five, lowers the shoulder, and he runs over Nick Jackson, who stops him from getting into the end zone, but does not stop him from picking up the first down. First and goal at the two. Well, it's just uh, some excellent blocking uh, getting away with it there by Lenore Ryan that created that play. Stevens with the carry this time as he looks for the goal line. He'll actually be taken down at the one-yard line, probably just thwarting the inevitable for the moment. And a nice stop there by Isaiah Dunn, helped out by Chris Matthews and Jackson Cawthon. Second and goal from the one. You would think that right now would be the time Laurel Ryan would be hurrying up its offense just to, to punch it through, but they've actually stopped and they're changing personnel out. And then that's causing Tuscan's defense to get a little discombobulated trying to get the right people in and off on the field. It actually allows them to make the substitutions that they need because they'll are substituted. Willingham to Stevens, and the fullback dive dives into the end zone. Touchdown, LR. Touchdown, Amin Stevens, as he will touch pay dirt for the Lenoride Bears for the sixth time this year. Just a little up and over there. Not quite a high fly over the pile, but a fly over the pile and into the end zone nonetheless. Bears add their 20th point of the day, 12-20 to play here in this opening half as we're into the second quarter. And the Pioneers' struggles offensively have uh, continued much of the season, averaging just 20 points per contest, but now they will be put in earnest to at least put something up on the board this next drive as the point is up and good by all ball. We head back to a break with your new score. It's the eighth-ranked Lenoride Bears, 21. And family. Food's here! What's it mean to you? We got lunch. To we us, got it means the people you care about, look out for, and yeah, love. Even if you'd never let them hear you say it. Hey, you're eating hummus? What's wrong with hummus? Here at Ingalls, we have everything you need to gather around the table and give each other a hard time. Because that's what families do. Ingalls. All the ingredients for family. Listening to South Atlantic Conference football, Tuscaloosa versus Lenore Ryan with Brian Staten and Joe Bird. So the Lenore Bears are back into the end zone and lead 21 to nothing. 11 plays, 61 yards, 242 off of the clock. The one yard plunge by Amin Stevens. Norwood to kick it away, and maybe the ball fell off the tee. I'm not sure. I saw this last night, actually, in a high school game where the kicker ran to the ball to and then just stopped and didn't kick it. But uh, they're apparently going to say it actually fell off the tee. So, actually, smart move by Norwood to actually not even go <laughs> through <laughs> yeah, with his kick. Uh, this is one of those situations. There is a little bit of a breeze blowing uh, directly from right to left here, looking at the flag on the other side. It's not a real strong breeze, but it's enough. The flag's blowing pretty good, and I guess the ball just got blown off the tee. We'll see if they kick it deep this time. Wilkins. Gamillion is back. This is not Wilkins. It's Chavis Williams from the 5 to the 10 and will be downed at about the 20-yard line. And on special teams, J.P. Palmer out of Townsend, Georgia with the stop. So no Thurlow Wilkins today, apparently, for the Pioneers. He has the uh, gear on. But it was not back there to return that one. First and 10 for the Pioneers at the 20. Uh, unofficially, it's looking, looking like we're getting about four mile an hour winds here at Pioneer Field today. Just a uh, light breeze. Joaquin Colazzo will come out of the gun. For the Pioneers, Gamillion is in the backfield. He's on his left shoulder. The Pioneers go left to right, wearing the uh, black football uniforms and the orange football pants. Colazzo looking to go deep for Torrey Ponder. He hangs it up there. It's caught. 40, 30, 20, 10. Answer. Torrey Ponder's third touchdown in two games as the Pioneers go 80 yards for the longest play of the year offensively, and the Pioneers are on the board. Uh, just a good play there by Tuscan and by Colazzo to recognize where Ponder was down on the field, get the football into him. Uh, 
Ponder did make a little bit of a move to make the Lenore Ryan defender fall down, and that allowed him just to run untouched the rest of the way into the end zone. Kind of a jump ball, and Ponder just won it. Ball kind of hung up in that breeze that we're talking about as they were going left to right, the breeze coming from right to left on your radio dial. So DeBusk will hold it, Shepard to put it up, and the kick is good for the Pioneers. So a little life here at Pioneer Field. They've trimmed the deficit back to 14. 12.01 to play in the first half. We go to a break with your new score. It's Lenore Ryan 21 and Tusculum 7. Pioneer Football. The first date. Only one chance to make that first impression. Don't worry, this might be new for you, but Ingalls has been there before. From flowers to the freshest ingredients, we have everything you need to put your best foot forward. I'm so sorry. Remember, you can't get to happily ever after without once upon a time. Ingalls, all the ingredients for family. Need some, uh, some type of success, so they get the success there. Kyle Duggar along with Jaquay Mitchell will be back deep. They have put Bradley in as an up back and I believe blocking back. Yeah, they've adjusted that just a little bit, but not much. So another fullback, Warren Bell, they are the up backs. Bradley and Bell, the up backs in front of Duggar and Mitchell. And Juski, little pooch kick. Bradley will go down and field it at the 27-yard line. So it'll be first and 10 for the Bears from there. A little extra shoving after the play. And really for Bradley, I just think he misjudged the ball. It was kind of a weird kick, kind of a knuckler in a way. And Bradley wanted to field it out of the air, did that. But they also went to a knee. So first and 10 for the, Pine the Lenore Ryan Bears. From their own 27. Both coaching staffs have talk, had a little bit of a talk with their team right now because there wasn't one, not two, but three separate instances after the whistle blown where shoving was going on down on the field. And I think both the sidelines are telling their guys to calm down and play football. Well, it's not Texas and Oklahoma. <laughs> no. But we had Tusculum and Lenore Ryan, a little uh, pregame uh, chatter that was going on as the Pioneers were warming up. The Bears were coming out, and both teams were jawjacking each other. So it started early. Here's Jace Jordan, who has just run crazy over everybody. And Jordan will gain about five yards across the 30, up near the 32-yard line. That's going to be Colton Strickland, Devin Woodson, who were there on that stop for the Pioneers. And as you and I pointed out, in Tuscombe's case, whenever you've got the reigning conference champions undefeated, number eight national ranked team, <laughs> might not be in your best interest to be jacking your jaw to them as they're coming out of the locker room. Don't need to jack a whole lot anyway, for sure. They'll reverse. This will be Young, and he's got Willingham as the lead blocker who lays a great block downfield to get away from Nick Jackson. Young makes a cut at the 50 on his feet at the 40 to the 30 and the 20 and is finally tracked down from behind by Isaiah Dunn and another explosion play that the Pioneers had to avoid today that they can't as Young goes big time near the 10-yard line. Yeah, that was just a great play by Lenore Ryan there, just getting blocks and then also individual running skills that made that happen. 60-some yards and quickly LR to the line of scrimmage as they sprint for first down. They'll turn around and hand it off to Bradley, who will go for little to not from the 11-yard line down to about the 10-yard line. They don't even have the chains moved yet and put them in place when LR wants to go. And they're still not even set up. They're just now getting the chains down to the 11. Right, and it, the down marker was fortunately where it needed to be, and then the guys on the chain crew were trying to figure out exactly where to get set up. <laughs> Unbelievable. 
Willingham under center. And this time the handoff is going to go to Bell. He'll take it inside the 10 down to about the five-yard line as C.J. Bartley comes from behind to make the stop. Third down and four from the five-yard line. And unfortunately on that play, I probably got an extra yard because the tackle was from behind and whenever they knocked the ball carrier forward. So on third down, the Pioneers trail 21-7, to seven, but a huge explosion play. Young goes for 57 yards on the run. Dunn and Alford saving a touchdown. Willingham under center. Handoff. This will be a mean Stevens, and he is hit and dropped by Malik Goodman right at the line of scrimmage. He and Ivan Hogan's help, and it's fourth down, and the Bears appear to send on the kicking team. Yeah, I mean, that was a great play by Goodman and Hogan's there just to read the play, get the hit low, and then come in with another uh, tackler high to finish it off. You know, Hogan's had a banner day last year against these Bears in the 35-10 to 10 loss. And today it seems to be Jackson Coffin, who does have the six tackles already. Hogan's just with two. So all ball to uh, kick a field goal from uh, 20 yards. It's up, and it is good. And the Bears add to their lead. 9.25 to play. Hello, my name is Jacob Fate and I'm the Dean of the College of Business at Tusculum University. I'm proud to share with you that the programs in the College of Business received accreditation through ACBSP in December of 2018. The Accreditation Council for Business Schools and Programs accredits business schools and programs worldwide. This accreditation elevates our programs to the top programs worldwide. Also be back there. Will Boney is the up back for the Pioneers. It will be Norwood to uh, kick it away. So the Bears lead 24 to 7. And of those 69 yards, 57 of them coming on one run by Derek Young. So Norwood, foot to leather, kicking it away. Williams, they realize that Wilkins is not out there. They've kicked it deep. Williams at the five. 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Penalty flag is thrown as Williams is chased out of bounds across the 35 to the 37-yard line, but will throw a flag back at the 21-yard line. Yeah, that's going to come back on the Pioneers once again. The extra going on, apparently. The LR is... Uh, they're pointing Tusculum's way, but this is a long conversation. Got holding against the Pioneers. You know, if I had a $5 bill for every penalty that you and I have ever seen thrown against Tusculum that called back some sort of long return, we wouldn't be sitting here talking right now because I'd be retired. Was, yes, very good chance. <laughs> it, mount, it would mount up. From the 11 for the Pioneers. Straight eye, Will Boney will be the fullback. Colazzo will come under center. And we'll adjust the tight end from the left side to the right. That is Carter Mangle. Fake the jet sweep, and they'll hand it off to Shippey. Has to dance around a couple of uh, blockers on penetration in the backfield, and just nothing going in the running game for the Pioneers today. Might get back to the line of scrimmage. And flying in, Kyle Duggar for the uh, Bear defense. They're going to give Shippey maybe about a yard if, if, it, if you're lucky. Again, I thought he did well just to get to the line. Eric Jackson also helping out in that run stop. It's so funny, Duggar just starts so deep, and then all of a sudden he's at the line of scrimmage for the uh, Lenoride Bears. Colazzo will drift back into the pistol. Shippey will be behind him and now set up to his left shoulder. Colazzo with the snap, 
looking and throwing out complete. This will be Shippy, and he'll make a guy miss, and he does so well. Dances a whole bunch, but only gets up to the 15-yard line to gain three to make it a third down and about seven for the Pioneers. Yeah, that play looked like it was going to develop a whole lot more until you realized that Shippy caught the ball actually behind the line of scrimmage and had to dance forward to get the yards that he did. Again, the Bear offense just seems to be so efficient. When they throw that screen, they've got 10, 15 yards every single time. So it's not the same as situation for this Pioneer team. Bears want to get off the field on third down. Third down and six coming up for the uh, Pioneers. Colazzo working out of the gun, looking, looking, throwing, and this pass will be incomplete. Very late flag, but well-deserved flag comes from the right location from the official who saw the play. As the aforementioned Eric Jackson came through the intended receiver, Tory Ponder, and created the contact. Yeah, it's, one, it's a no-brainer for what went on right there. So the Pioneers are going to get a fresh set of downs on this one. So it will be a pass interference. Pass interference, So because it was inside of 15 yards, we'll just say a spot foul up to the 23-yard line, first and 10 for the Pioneers. You know, first down's kind of been hard to come by today, but so right now whenever you're down 24-7 in the second quarter, take them any way you can get them. Under eight minutes to play here in the second, 24-7 LR. Backs will be split in the backfield, both Gamillion and Shippy in the backfield, uh, flanking Joaquin Colazzo. Handed off to Shippy, who had minus five yards rushing in this game last year has now just three yards for the game as he gets a yard here on his fifth carry of the game. I'm going to say he's got more carries than he does yards. <laughs> yeah. It's just been a tough go. Joaquin Colazzo has been, what, he's been sacked three times, minus 24 yards for him. The Pioneers have minus 22 yards rushing, 95 yards total to the Bears, 268. They give Shippy two yards, second down and eight for the Pioneers at the 25-yard line. Colazzo will line up in the gun. Shippy on his right shoulder, back to pass. Colazzo steps up, and he's looking to go deep for Ponder, and Kyle Duggar had that in cover two coverage over the top, and uh, really a good pass by Colazzo because he somewhat threw it away, even though he had two guys wide open in the flat. Yeah, it was just a, a long throw downfield. The best part of it was is he threw it to where no one Ryan player was going to get to it. Third down and eight. From the 25, the Bears leading it 24-7, to and the Bears jumping up and down, trying to get off the field on third down as well. So Colazzo this time will check with his offensive line as the Bears show just four down linemen this time and now bring another man into the box. Step out of the press coverage. Colazzo steps up and he'll be tripped up at the behind the line of scrimmage and will be brought down for what appears to be the fourth sack of the football game and good pressure by Amari Houston to bring down Colazzo for the loss of two it's fourth down and it was really just a one-handed literal shoestring tackle um, grabbed a hold of Colazzo's foot as he was laying on the ground actually yeah so 640 to play 11 guys well 10 guys at the line of scrimmage for the Bears they don't really come after it this rugby style kick will be a low spinner fielded by Duggar at the 41 and he is covered up and brought down good special teams coverage that time making it very difficult for Duggar to get free today CJ Bartley was down there again coach Odom said we're going to make some adjustments on special teams they got three starters out there on that special teams play. Well, I mean, whenever you've got a return man like Duggar, you know that you've got to do something to get coverage. And right there, because... It's fine. It'll be okay, okay? Nobody nobody cares about the flowers. Who needs flowers at a, a wedding? At Ingalls, we know that the best of plans don't always go according to plan. My best friend's getting married today and the florist never showed. That's why we're always there when you need us. What are their colors? Purple and cream. With smiling faces and helping hands. No one cares. No one cares. You will look great. Flowers are not important. And where is Holly? Uh, have you any anyone seen Holly? And although life will be predictably unpredictable. Let's get you to that wedding. A curveball is that much more satisfying. I got the flowers! When you 
knock it out of the park. So when the plan goes out the window and improvisation becomes the order of the day, just remember, that's where the best of memories are made. All right, they're ready for us. True story. Ingalls, all the ingredients for family. yards of total offense, 117 of that through the air. Yeah, so minus 22 yards rushing. Bears adjust the offensive line. Jaquay Mitchell goes in motion. They'll run misdirection. Willingham to throw, looking downfield as he took a massive hit. And a penalty is going to come on this play on Josh Forrest as Willingham lost his helmet. And a, another flag that comes in the area of what would be a hold against the Pioneers on the wheel route. So two penalties, which would be interesting to see if this will be targeting and if Forrest is done for the game. It came from the referee, which was standing right in front of the play. And we're just, there's a long discussion. There are two flags that are down. He went in helmet to helmet on that, so by today's rule. Probably wouldn't surprise me if they call targeting. Which probably should be the right call. You just don't see it in Division II football enough. Forrest had a free run into Willingham, and he, yet yeah, he does lead. He doesn't lower his head, if that makes any sense, but he kind of went in with a forearm hit to the chest. They'll probably call targeting on the, to err on the side of caution. Holding defense number 29, over for being declined. So Forrest will be disqualified from the game. They do call targeting, and I think if they go back and look at it, it'll be very similar to last week's game for Wingate. And that's unfortunate. Really, because he kind of goes in, Lee doesn't. It, it's not roughing the passer. It's not a late hit. They called roughing the passer. Yeah, he. It was in the act of throwing when he hit the quarterback. But that's the very similar call to what they called against the Bulldogs last week. So I'm not even going to argue it anyway. Yeah, I mean you can't argue with the application of the rule. You, yeah. you can argue the rule itself, though. Honestly. He did lead with the forearm into his chest, and his face mask did hit the helmet of Willingham, and his helmet did come off. So it looked a whole lot worse. It looked, it looked bad, but he did not lead with the crown of his helmet on Willingham. Willingham to pass across the middle to Jaquay Mitchell, who's wide open out of the backfield. Nobody in the middle of the field, and Jaquay Mitchell walks in for a bare touchdown, but there is a penalty flag down be holding against Lenore Ryan, so that'll be the second touchdown they've had wiped off the board for holding. Well, for penalties, first one that hold. Got a bunch of jaw jack. And as quick as the play developed, I'm actually surprised that they had enough time to make a hold, to be honest with you. But they will call holding. It goes on the tight end for the Lenore Ryan Bears, Drake Starks. And that'll move the ball back to the Bear 47-yard line. Tuscan likes to use the little Seinfeld zinger whenever a penalty goes against the other team. I, I would save that till maybe we were winning 24 to 7. <laughs> if we, well, if we did that, we, we wouldn't have played anything all year. First down and 10, unless we were at the, on the road in Limestone. First down and 20 from the 47. Willingham comes under center, adjusts that offensive line. Everybody makes an adjustment, and then he'll toss it to the near side. And there's an illegal block as Jace Jordan gets the toss, crosses the 50 and down to the Pioneer 46-yard line before he stopped. Hogan, Coffin were both there for the Pioneers. And I have figured out, I guess, why it's not movement on the offensive line. So the offensive line appears to go down, but they actually don't go down and get their hands on the ground and become set. They just kind of lean over forward, and then they make that a all-hands-on-deck adjustment. 
just a good system. And again, Drew Chronic out of Reinhardt College was very successful when he was there at Reinhardt. 39 and 5 all time, and he's only lost twice as the Bear head coach in 19 games. This is his 20th game. As Willingham is under pressure, and he's going to be sacked. That'll be the first sack allowed by the Bears this year, and just the Pioneers' third, and it's Ashton Watson. Watson doing a good job of being right on the spot whenever the uh, defense flushed the quarterback out of the pocket. He was there to make the sack. So third down and 14 back at the 47-yard line. Somewhat of a uh, baby steps here on that particular play. Demarius Hampton along with Derek Young to the far sideline. Jaquay Mitchell to the near side. Willingham out of the gun. Rolling, looking, under pressure, delivering a pass picked off. Malik Goodman with the interception. Penalty flag is down. 20, 25, 30 into the 35-yard line. And this will probably negate an interception by the Pioneers. Pro and... Uh, <laughs> can't can't see the replay now. Happens when our connection goes down. But great pressure right up the middle for Tuscal. And applying the pressure, LeKendry Taylor on Willingham. They're going to call pass interference on Nick Jackson. Would love to have had a chance to see that one again. We've lost some internet here in the uh, in the booth to have a chance to see that. So we won't have that opportunity. And it negates a Malik Goodman interception, his second of the game. And it will be first and 10 for the Bears to the 32. So there you go. It's key to the game. You got to get off the field on third down and now another penalty negating that. Yeah, and negating it and also pushing Lenore Ryan deep into Tusculum territory. From the 32, Amin Stevens, the feature back for the Bears. They will adjust that wing T style. Mitchell will be the man in motion. They'll hand it off, and this will be Stevens. And he'll be hit initially by Jackson Cawthon and finished off by Xavier Clemens. He'll gain about four to the 28, bring up second down at six. Still no, uh, no way to see. I, I didn't see pass interference. I'm not saying there was it. I just didn't see it because whatever it was, it wasn't anywhere near the play. So second down and six. To the far sideline, it's going to go Ryan Carter. Saheem Brooks will come to the near side. Stevens will be the, the slot back to the near side. So the Bears have had a touchdown negated. Willingham to pass across the middle has a man coming open. It's incomplete. And it'll bring up third down and six for the Bears. Good play there by uh, Lenore Ryan. Just didn't quite get the uh, ball delivered where they needed to. Or they probably wouldn't have got into the end zone because they would have been down on the ground at about the one. So we make it third down and six. Probably in the neighborhood of two down territory for Lenore Ryan either way because where they have the football on the 28, even if they don't get the first down, you're still going to be pushing field goal yardage. Willingham will come out of the gun. Play action pass. Looking, dancing, running. 25, 20. 15 and down at about the 13 yard line. Good coverage in the secondary. Ivan Hogan's had to step up and make the tackle, but Willingham goes for big yards. Yeah, Hogan breaking off of. Uh, where you got a penalty flag somewhere? And we do have a flag down, and we just saw a chance of the replay, and I do think that Jackson just got a piece of him. Not much. There, there, uh, there's so little. That's that's not much. He may have held him before he, the it came into screen, but that's a tough call. So the pioneer bench gets an unsportsmanlike. Does that mean anybody on the bench that gets another one is ejected <laughs> from the game? I, I, I don't know the answer. I mean, it's not Texas, Oklahoma. But it moves the ball now inside the 10 to the 6 with 348 to the half. First and goal for the Bears. You give them the ball here, there's points on the board. Stevens from the 5, and he lunges for the goal line and gets in. Touchdown, I mean Stevens. Touchdown, LR. 7-yard touchdown run to add to the Bear lead. I'm not exactly sure what would have caused the sportsman lack on the bench because there wasn't a – play a call or anything. It was just a good play by Lenore Ryan. So. 
just a quarterback that took off. Yeah. You know, I mean, he – and it may have been unsportsmanlike on the coaching staff toward their players, but, again, that was good coverage. I believe they felt like there may have been a holding, which sprung Willingham into some daylight. Either way, all balls point after is up and good, and the Bears – have not really been threatened in the game. 3.36 to play in the first half. We go back to a break with your new score. It's Lenoron 31 and Tusculum 7. So much of life these days is rushing around from one place to another. Sometimes you just want to enjoy the journey on the way to the destination. And part of what makes it a little more enjoyable is an appreciation for the folks who help you get there. At Ingalls, we know that the people who send you on your way are the same ones who keep you coming back. I think you should take it for a spin. Are you serious? <laughs> Ingalls, all the ingredients for family. week in a row for the opposition. Six plays, 58 yards, and uh, all of it on the ground, plus penalties. Three for 36 yards on that particular drive against the Pioneers, and the lead 31-7 to seven for the Bears. This kickoff will go five yards out of bounds. That's tough. Not a uh, whole lot of penalties against Lenore Ryan today. This is only going to be their fourth for 38 yards as opposed to, what is that, six for more than 100 for the Pioneers. So the kick goes out of bounds. Pioneers have 101 yards of penalties in the game. And now the Pioneers will have it first and 10 at the 35. You know, they do get the kickoff to start the second half. So let's catch lightning in a bottle, maybe. Yeah, dr drive down now, put you – put your touchdown in the end zone, go into halftime feeling good about yourself, and then come back out and ride that momentum to start the second half. So Williams along with Moss to the far side. Bellinger does not have a catch so far in the football game and has been targeted just once on a pass that was thrown over him. Will go in motion near side. Colazzo looking, finding Bellinger on that crossing pattern for little to none for a gain of maybe a yard. But that continues to streak every game of his college career. A.J. Bellinger has a catch. All right, so, you know, nice stat for him to keep that. But right now we need the Pioneers to keep moving the ball forward and try to score. Second down and nine as the clock runs with 3.15 to play here in this first half. On an overcast day here in East Tennessee, did think that we would have cooler temperatures but a little more rain earlier, but we didn't get the rain. I think uh, that the high of the day was at about 7 o'clock this yeah, morning. Yeah, 7 o'clock as the temperatures continue to fall. And Maurice Gamillion and uh, Amari Houston says, nope, not much there. And not much. Maybe a yard. Third down and about eight and a half for the Pioneers. Right, it's just a good read by LR's defense right there. Saw what the Pioneers were up to and, and stopped them cold. Just beating our offensive line. I mean, just we're banged up, beaten up there. Yes, there's some starters that aren't in there. But let's just be real. <laughs> These guys that have been playing have been playing a lot of football so far this year. Just getting beat up by that defensive front by the LR Bears. Third down and nine at the 36 for the Pioneers. Colazzo to pass with the snap. Looking, looking with some time. And this pass is incomplete. Deshaun Davis was in the area. Maurice Gamillion on a wheel route falls incomplete, and it'll be fourth down. Pioneers have to send the punt unit on again. You talk about how much time these guys are spending on being beat up and everything. But the number of nationally ranked opponents you play. Yeah. This, and, and we're really just kind of coming up on the halfway point of the season here in about two minutes and 16 seconds because, yeah. truthfully, odd number of games and no more than what we've played. It seems like it's lasted a while, but yeah. it hasn't. Can trail to punt, rugby style once again. Good snap, and the punt is low, end over end. Gets a great roll. Duggar fields it on a short hop at the 24 and is taken back at the 22-yard line. The long snapper was there with the snap, Yarlett. And also downfield was C.J. Bartley, one of the first down there for the Pioneers. First and 10 for the Bears at the 20.
Stevens in the backfield. Tough to see from the side. Jordan will go in motion. He'll get the handoff and uh, try to get outside, and he has the corner at the 25 and then exited out of bounds by Malik Goodman. He's had a banner game. He's had an interception and then one that was negated on the pass interference. Uh, you're right now, if you're Lenore Ryan, how do you play out the, the rest of this first half, keep the ball on the ground or just keep the clock running and get on into halftime? Well, they quickly get to the line of scrimmage, and they'll hand it off. This will be to the fullback right up the middle, and that's actually going to be the backup, Warren Bell. He'll cross the 30 to the 31, and it's third down and a yard. And you think about Lenore Ryan, that passing game, even in the second half, why would you even put the ball in the air? Because you've been intercepted once, technically twice. You got Lake and got one of them back. You're, you're up the way you are. Just keep pounding the ball on the Pioneers. A minute and a half to play. Third down and a yard for L.R. Willingham comes under center. Two wideouts to the near side. And the handoff for the first down across the 31 to the 33-yard line will go Stevens and Jackson Cawthon. He had a career game last week with 10 tackles. He's already about there. In this football game. Roxy taking care of us because I've been yeah. smelling this popcorn. I said, I'm going out there Roxy. at halftime, and she brought it to us. First down and 10 for the Bears. Quickly to the line of scrimmage. Willingham going to take a shot. He gets a shot, and the pass is complete to Young downfield at the 35. That should be offensive pass interference on a push-off. I mean, that's what they're going to call is targeting again against the Pioneers at helmet-to-helmet contact. So much so much my, for my theory about not putting the ball in the air. Well, I think this will be an offensive pass interference. I think this is a shove by Young before he made the catch. He made a nice little subtle shove, which... Pass ah, Good read. It, you know, it's that professional, if you extend your elbow, you're fine. But if you extend your whole arm, you're not fine. And he extended the whole arm. And for the life of me, the way the tackle was made, I figured they were going to call helmet to helmet again against the Pioneers defenseless receiver or whatever they want to roll the right. It negates a big play for the Bears once again. Willingham, who's 5 of 11 in the game for 93 yards, last year completed just seven passes against the Pioneers. He went seven for 23. But of the seven, three of them went for scores. And they blew it open in the second half. After a 14 to 10 halftime score, the Bears went on to win 35 to 10. Well, here on the road, they lead 30, 31 to 7. Bears come under center, first down and 25, back at the 20-yard line this time. They hand it off straight up the middle. Rajah Bell will get the carry to about the 25-yard line. Pardon me, Rajah Bradley to the 25, gain of five for the Bears. All right, now slow it down just a little bit, looking over the sideline. Going to have to run one play here and to get out of the half. So coming up at the half, a look at this week in Tenskillum Athletics. Big goings on here on campus today in volleyball as this volleyball team has really, after a rough start, rebounded nicely but have the 23rd best team in the country at Pioneer Arena today, the Wingate Bulldogs. That is underway right now, so that's going on. And we'll have that. Stats, scores, and highlights here in this first half as the Bears will call a timeout here with five seconds to play. So next week, Tusculum will be on the road as we'll try. The first date. Only one chance to make that first impression. Don't worry. This might be new for you, but Ingalls has been there before. From flowers to the freshest ingredients, we have everything you need to put your best foot forward. Sorry. Remember, you can't get to happily ever after without once upon a time. Ingalls, all the ingredients for family. A lot of the North Carolina schools out of conference don't leave the state. They don't have to. They don't have to. Willingham will go to a knee after the timeout to end the first half of play. Mercifully, the Bears put up 318 yards of offense to the Pioneers, 96, and they sacked Joaquin Colazzo on four.
much of life these days is rushing around from one place to another. Sometimes you just want to enjoy the journey on the way to the destination. And part of what makes it a little more enjoyable is an appreciation for the folks who help you get there. At Ingalls, we know that the people who send you on your way are the same ones who keep you coming back. I think you should take it for a spin. Are you serious? <laughs> Ingalls, all the ingredients for family. The first date. Only one chance to make that first impression. Don't worry, this might be new for you, but Ingalls has been there before. From flowers to the freshest ingredients, we have everything you need to put your best foot forward. I'm so sorry. Remember, you can't get to happily ever after without once upon a time. Ingalls, all the ingredients for family. Tusculum University is Tennessee's first university. Established in 1794, Tusculum's beautiful campus is nestled in the foothills of the Great Smoky Mountains. Students from 31 states and 15 countries have found a home here. With nearly 60 areas of study, Tusculum can help you pioneer your path to success. Visit www.tusculum.edu or call 423-636-7300 to discover the pioneer experience for yourself. It's fine, it'll be okay, okay? Nobody, nobody cares about the flowers. Who needs flowers at a, a wedding? At Ingalls, we know that the best of plans don't always go according to plan. My best friend's getting married today and the florist never showed. That's why we're always there when you need us. What are their colors? Purple and cream. With smiling faces and helping hands. No one cares, no one cares you will look great. Flowers are not important. And where is Holly? Uh, have you, any, anyone seen Holly? And although life will be predictably unpredictable. Let's get you to that wedding. A curveball is that much more satisfying. I got the flowers! When you knock it out of the park. Oh my gosh, awesome. So when the plan goes out the window and improvisation becomes the order of the day, just remember, that's where the best of memories are made. All right, they're ready for us. True story. Ingalls, all the ingredients for family.
family. Food's here! What's it mean to you? To us, it means the people you care about, look out for, and yeah, love. Even if you'd never let them hear you say it. Hey, you're eating hummus? What's wrong with hummus? Here at Ingalls, we have everything you need to gather around the table and give each other a hard time. Because that's what families do. Ingalls, all the ingredients for family. Hello, my name is Jacob Faith, and I'm the Dean of the College of Business at Tusculum University. I'm proud to share with you that the programs in the College of Business received accreditation through ACBSP in December of 2018. The Accreditation Council for Business Schools and Programs accredits business schools and programs worldwide. This accreditation elevates our programs to the top programs worldwide. We are in Granger County, Tennessee, here at Pierce Farms, and uh, the Pierce family has been working with Ingalls for over 30 years. It means a great deal supplying uh, produce as a local farmer. Uh, it really touches base knowing that we're just simple people just trying to help, and we love what we do, and Ingalls is a huge part of helping us do it. Farming is who we are, and it's in our blood. God has really blessed us with the sun and the soil to grow the best tomatoes you'll find anywhere. <laughs> I believe it's really in the soil. So if you're in Granger County and you farm tomatoes, then you're, you're in. <laughs> Just a great blessing on us to actually farm and be able to farm and to supply tomatoes to people. And Ingalls really cares about family farms like Pierce Farms, and they really care about their customers. We're just glad to be a part of that. God has blessed us with a really great partnership there. They make fresh local produce have real meaning for lots of people. I'm Shane Pierce, and this is my Ingalls story. So much of life these days is rushing around from one place to another. Sometimes you just want to enjoy the journey on the way to the destination. And part of what makes it a little more enjoyable is an appreciation for the folks who help you get there. At Ingalls, we know that the people who send you on your way are the same ones who keep you coming back. I think you should take it for a spin. Are you serious? <laughs> Ingalls, all the ingredients for family. The first date. Only one chance to make that first impression. Don't worry. This might be new for you, but Ingalls has been there before. From flowers to the freshest ingredients, we have everything you need to put your best foot forward. I'm so sorry. Remember, you can't get to happily ever after without once upon a time. Ingalls, all the ingredients for family. 
Tusculum University is Tennessee's first university. Established in 1794, Tusculum's beautiful campus is nestled in the foothills of the Great Smoky Mountains. Students from 31 states and 15 countries have found a home here. With nearly 60 areas of study, Tusculum can help you pioneer your path to success. Visit www.tusculum.edu or call 423-636-7300 to discover the pioneer experience for yourself. It's fine. It'll be okay, okay? Nobody nobody cares about the flowers. Who needs flowers at a, a wedding? At Ingalls, we know that the best of plans don't always go according to plan. My best friend's getting married today and the florist never showed. That's why we're always there when you need us. What are their colors? Purple and cream. With smiling faces and helping hands. No one cares. No one cares you will look great. Flowers are not important. And where is Holly? Uh, have you any, anyone seen Holly? And although life will be predictably unpredictable. Let's get you to that wedding. A curveball is that much more satisfying. I got the flowers! When you knock it out of the park. Oh my gosh, it's awesome! <laughs> So when the plan goes out the window and improvisation becomes the order of the day, just remember, that's where the best of memories are made. All right, they're ready for us. True story. Ingalls, all the ingredients for family. family. Food's here! What's it mean to you? To us, it means the people you care about, look out for, and yeah, love. Even if you'd never let them hear you say it. Hey, <laughs> you're eating hummus? What's wrong with hummus? Here at Ingalls, we have everything you need to gather around the table and give each other a hard time. Because that's what families do. Ingalls, all the ingredients for family. Hello, my name is Jacob Fate and I'm the Dean of the College of Business at Tusculum University. I'm proud to share with you that the programs in the College of Business received accreditation through ACBSP in December of 2018. The Accreditation Council for Business Schools and Programs accredits business schools and programs worldwide. This accreditation elevates our programs to the top programs worldwide. We are in Granger County, Tennessee, here at Pierce Farms, and uh, the Pierce family has been working with Ingalls for over 30 years. It means a great deal supplying uh, produce as a local farmer. Uh, it really touches base knowing that we're just simple people just trying to help, and we love what we do, and Ingalls is a huge part of helping us do it. Farming is who we are, and it's in our blood. God has really blessed us with the sun and the soil to grow the best tomatoes you'll find anywhere. <laughs> I believe it's really in the soil. So if you're in Granger County and you farm tomatoes, then you're, you're in. <laughs> Just a great blessing on us to actually farm and be able to farm and to supply tomatoes to people. And Ingalls really cares about family farms like Pierce Farms, and they really care about their customers. We're just glad to be a part of that. God has blessed us with a really great partnership there. They make fresh local produce have real meaning for lots of people. I'm Shane Pierce, and this is my Ingalls story.
So much of life these days is rushing around from one place to another. Sometimes you just want to enjoy the journey on the way to the destination. And part of what makes it a little more enjoyable is an appreciation for the folks who help you get there. At Ingalls, we know that the people who send you on your way are the same ones who keep you coming back. I think you should take it for a spin. Are you serious? <laughs> Ingalls, all the ingredients for family. Forsberg on his honeymoon this week, so wishing him the very best as well. Joe, obviously uh, not ideal situations, tough start, a lot of bickering that kind of went on that first half on the sideline, but uh, it obviously means that they at least care uh, uh, about what's going on. It, yeah, it, but it is unfortunate. Before the Pioneers could make game adjustments, I bet the first thing they had to do is kind of get themselves in order in the locker room so they could start focusing on the second half of the football game. Norwood's going to kick this one eight yards deep. That's a good kick. And maybe his best of the year. Right to left on your radio dial, he kicked the ball. And lots of times that is you with the wind at your back. He didn't need any wind. There. That's actually Michael Owen kicking off. I've said Jefferson Norwood. They've had three different kickers. All balls kicked off. Owen and now Norwood has kicked off and, uh, in the football game. And there is no wind now. Flags is hanging uh, straight down the flagpole. Bushes aren't rustling. So that was all leg. No wind. Well, Owen had punted only once and only 11 times on the year coming into today, so give him a chance to use that leg still. So it's the Pioneers first and 10 offensively. They go left to right on your radio dial, and they have no running game to speak of. They'll try a little draw here with Jordan Ship. He had a little daylight, made a move, and he will get five hard yards. And to avoid Kyle Duggar is amazing, but that's what Shippy did on the play. He's an all-conference running back, and the uh, Bears just quick pursuit to the football. Uh, ball spotted right on the 30-yard uh, line, so nice little pick up there to, for the first play of the game, for sh um, first play of the second half. Second down and five. Pioneers need to win first down, so they got to win there. A.J. Bellinger lines up to the far side. The Pioneers go max protect and 12 personnel. And hand it off. This is Shippy, And, again, just not a lot of running room there. And one of the first there is Jaquan Artis. Finished second in the conference last year with 11 sacks. Had four fumble recoveries. He led the Bears with 17 quarterback hurries. 
He also led the squad with 18 tackles for loss. He makes the play there for a gain of two for Jordan Shipping. In order for that play to be successful for Tuscombe, the Pioneer offense is going to have to sell spreading the field to Lenore Ryan and get Lenore Ryan's defense to spread things out just so you don't have all those guys right in the box. So third down and three. The Pioneers have not converted on third down in the game. They'll bring Hundley into the backfield as an H-back lining up basically now as a fullback in that backfield. They're going to hand it off to Shippy and hand it off to him some five yards deep. And just no push by the offensive line in the game. They're just getting beat up front. Dan Luba and the Bears leading the charge on that play, and it's fourth down. They're going to give him the benefit of the doubt and say he got back to the line of scrimmage instead of losing a, a yard. But either way, results the same. Pioneers are having to punt away to a very good Lenore Ryan offense. Fourth down from the 31, and Cantrell to punt the ball away. Two minutes into this second half, Kyle Duggar stands inside the 40, about the 38-yard line. Garlic to snap it. It's kind of a wobbler back to him, and Cantrell end over end. Duggar asking for a fair catch and makes that catch at his ankles at the 41-yard line. First and 10 for the Lenore Ryan Bears. I wonder uh, if going into next week, Cantrell's going to have to get that rugby style out of it. Practice all week to do that just for this game, and now he's got to go back to normal punting next week. Yeah, it's work. It's been effective today. Might as well keep doing. We're on artificial turf next week, so it's going to hit and roll. For the folks who help, let it do that. At Ingles, so the Bears and the offensive juggernaut back on the field. Jaquan Jaquay Mitchell is lined up to the right side as a as a wide out. I mean Stevens with the carry, and they just lower the shoulder right up the middle. And Colton Strickland is there with the stop defensively, along with C.J. Bartley having a career day. Right now, just Lenore Ryan can be at whatever pace they want to be. They are slowed down a little bit from what they were doing in the first half. So they can dictate the rest of the game as they see fit. Just a, a tempo wing T team. Just ridiculous. Willingham runs the option to the far side. Blocks so well to Jaquay Mitchell. Makes a couple of guys miss. And then Ivan Hogan's recovers to make the stop. And not before Jaquay Mitchell picks up eight and a first down. First and ten. Just a good job uh, by an Orion's offense blocking and then also ball carrying, able to dodge and dive and get people out of the way. Five D's in dodgeball. <laughs> dodge, I, I, dip, I, dive, duck, and dodge. I, I stayed away from the full five and just went with two. <laughs> first and ten from the 46 of the Pioneers with the LR Bears leading 31-7, to their first offensive series here of this second half after they hold the Pioneers to yet another three and out. Willingham comes under center. Yeah, back to pass, five-step drop under pressure. Has to let it go early, but does. And finding Young, who is hit awkwardly, and a flag comes in late. Very late on the play as Young took a hit around the head. Yeah, he's not getting up. And the back. Yeah, it was, that is going to hit Isaiah, hurt. Isaiah Dunn making the stop. And this isn't going to be... Oh, we're way behind the play here. Yeah, according to uh, what we're watching, Tuscan still has the football. The flag is not near where the play ended. It's actually a ways away. It's good to see Young get up, but again, dealing with kind of a – he was holding the lower back. They did not review the targeting of the first half like they did last week. So Josh Forrest apparently will be out of this game. It's really good to see Young walking off the field. But another flag. And they're going to mark it off against Tusculum after the play. During the play, Marcy, defense number 29. 15 yards all right, so they are going to say that Dunn was targeting. So uh, that's another player that the Pioneers are going to lose, get sent to the locker room. So Nick Jackson will walk back onto the field, and Dunn, who had missed the last few games, will be back out there. I just, um, I guess he he lowered his 
his shoulder into the back of the helmet. Again, it's a safety issue. I don't, I don't have any issues with the safety aspect of it. None whatsoever. I just targeting the way it's defined to me is helmet to helmet. And not just a hit to the head because you see those in football every play. I mean, Stevens with the carry, and the Pioneers slow him down from the 12 down to the 10-yard, make that the 11-yard line for a gain of a yard. Now it's just time to man up for the Pioneers. So many penalties in this game, nine for 116 in the game. Yeah, I think uh, we're finally we're catching up here. here. This is going to be the replay of the play in question. So 11-15 to play here in this third quarter, and the Bears knocking on the door, second down and eight from the 11-yard line. Willingham, little shovel toss out to Amin Stevens with blockers at the five, and he's lost the football, and the Bears, I think, have recovered it in the end zone, or at least close to it, right down at the one-yard line, it would appear, and quickly on the ball was Demarius Hampton, and the Bears are going to go quickly to the line of scrimmage. Tuscanum has a player on the ground, so they're not going quickly. The last I don't year. know if that's Jackson oh, Cawthon or not. That would be a huge loss for this Pioneer team. did see the replay there a minute ago, and it's one of those situations where you're, you're going in to make a tackle to a guy in, falling down. Yeah, you're going in to make a tackle. The offensive player f falls down into your into your path, and I would be saying the same thing for you know, no matter who's right. for yeah. or against, if a, def if a defender has already committed to making a tackle and the other person's body shifts, they move, they dive, they lean into it, it's kind of, you know, difficult to pull out of that. The good news in all that is that Young walked off the field. We're, gr we're gr just ecstatic to see that with the amount of injuries that the Pioneers have seen over the last – few weeks of play but uh, again there's a, a situation right there where you've got a player going in to make the stop how can he move and adjust his body to get out of the way of the offensive yeah. player who's falling into him he's made a great catch he's off balance he's coming down and he's coming down quickly and Isaiah Dunn just a victim of <laughs> what do you think right spot, wrong time kind of situation. I mean, it's almost reverse of that. It's just very unfortunate. It's it's one of those where somewhere the football powers have to take a look at common sense and reality and realize that, it, you know, even if you change that, targeting by definition means that right. you're, you're targeting doing it on purpose. It, uh, some situations are not on purpose. You're making a textbook tackle and people and bodies are flying around. Jackson Cawthon runs off the field. That's good news for the Pioneers. I mean, Stevens, fullback dive straight ahead for his third touchdown of the game. Give it to him. Touchdown Bears. Touchdown to mean Stevens, his third of the game. And the Bears continue to flex their muscle. Just continue to spread the lead here and uh, increase in what they're doing to, to be the, one of the top ten teams in the country. Eighth touchdown of the year for Amin Stevens here today. I mean, Stevens last year as a true freshman led the team with 749 rushing yards and 165 carries, and he finished second in the league with 11 touchdowns last year. Now he has eight. Point after by Allball is up and good by the Bears, who extend the lead. 10.47 to play in the third quarter. Back after this. The first date. Only one chance to make that first impression. Don't worry, this might be new for you, but Ingalls has been there before. From flowers to the freshest ingredients, we have everything you need to put your best foot forward. I'm so sorry. Let me Remember, you can't get to happily ever after without once upon a time. Ingalls, all the ingredients for family. that aided that drive once again. 21-yard catch by Young, and then the penalty added after that. 
Six plays, 59 yards, 207 off the clock. The Bears lead 38 to 7. Owen adjusting his kickoff coverage team. Foot to leather. High kick, angling it to the end zone. Fielded by Williams inside the end zone by a yard at the 5 to the 10. And a penalty flag is thrown, and it comes from the backside official on this near sideline around the 29-yard line. Chavis Williams will return it out to the 24, 25-yard return. But again, another penalty for the Pioneers who have been penalized nine times for 114 yards in the game. Well, this one is between the, thir the painted number 30 and the hash marks on the near sideline. The play was developing and ended up over on literally the far out-of-bounds sidelines. So across the field from each other. So I'm pretty sure it didn't have anything to do with the play. Nothing to do with the play. But it will go against the Pioneers because they're turned to the Pioneers' end zone. Joaquin Colazzo will come off the sideline. Get final instructions from Brian Ferguson. Ooh. Uh, we've been penalized with this whole blindside block thing a few times, too. I've learned over the years, you know how I know for sure if there's a penalty flag during a Tusculum return who it's going to go against? If it's a good return? Or, or just a return <laughs> anymore. I mean, it's, we, we've, got, we've gotten past just good returns because, I mean, that wasn't an exceptional return. <laughs> But I know if Tus Tusculum is the team returning the ball and there's a penalty flag, well, it's going against it's Tusculum. It's going against Tusculum. All right, so first and 10 back at the 12 for the Pioneers. Joaquin Colazzo is going to hand it off to Jordan Shippey. Four plays here in the second half. All four have been runs, and all four have been for little to nothing. We did have a five-yard run for Jordan. He has eight carries now, nine carries for 11 yards. They give him half a yard there. Yeah, give him a little bit of fit of the doubt there to move the ball forward but still is just running into a pile of humanity. You're not going to go anywhere. Dan Luba, all-conference second team last year, second among defensive linemen in the conference with 62 total tackles at 11 for loss. Third on the team with seven and a half sacks last year for Luba, who's got a strip sack today and the fumble recovery. Under 10 to play in the third. Colazzo to pass. Pump fakes, and it really took a lot of the velocity off the ball looking for Torrey Ponder. He didn't come out of the break in time, and it'll bring up third down and nine for the Pioneers. You know, I really don't think the pump fake is what took the velocity off the ball. I think he was hit right as he was releasing the football, so it's, that's where the problem lied for the Pioneers. He just had no zip on it whatsoever, taking a hit and then trying to throw off the pump fake. Pioneer defense will get set to uh, come back onto the field, and the reason they're doing this is because the Pioneers are 0 for third down today. 0 for 7 to this point. The Bears are 6 for 9 on third down, leading it 38 to 7. Shippy to the left shoulder of Colazzo out of the gun, and I'm not sure they got the playoff on time. And the flag comes out a bit late for a delay of game against the Pioneers. So that will back them up five more, so it'll be third and 14. Hmm. Next week, Joe and I will be in Wise, Virginia. Second trip there all time. Dane Dameron's Cavaliers await the uh, Tusculum Pioneers next week. Of course, they still have a game to play today. They're playing Newberry, who lost to Mars Hill last week, 20-19. to 19. A little shock there for the uh, Newberry Wolves to fall at home to the Mars Hill Lions. Bears show blitz on third down and 14. Colazzo with three seconds to get the snap off, finally does. And the Bears stunt. The pass incomplete for Jake Moss. And a little extracurricular there. Could have been unsportsmanlike on the uh, tackle after the incompletion. And it's fourth down. Well, that's another one of those situations where, like I say, you've got to give benefit of the doubt. The defender was in the process of making a tackle. And honestly, he's not, he just knows, hey, the ball is coming to this guy. Yep. He's going to complete and do his task whether the guy caught the football or not. Right. So Kyle Dunger is going to stand at the 38-yard line as Cantrell punts eight yards deep from his own end zone. High snap, comes down with it, saves it before it goes out of play, then somehow miraculously gets the punt off, and Dunger is just going to watch it roll at the 45 and to the 47-yard line. We're going to be first and 10 from there 
Uh, pretty remarkable for Cantrell to catch that punt before it goes out of the back of the end zone. Uh, well, even more so, and if his toes didn't get in the white, there wasn't but about two <laughs> blades of green grass from him stepping. He didn't play any his first year. And then last year really set the conference on fire. And really for a running team, he threw for 2,700 yards and more on that coming up. Amin Stevens will be taken down by Ivan Hogan's, but not before he picks up about four yards on the play. And, and what I mean, he shattered the record book for most touchdown passes in a season. 26 touchdown passes, breaking the mark of 18 in the LR record books. He tied the conference lead for touchdowns, spent his second in the league with 2,281 passing yards and a pass efficiency rating of 147.2 for a team that ran the football for 316 <laughs> yards a game. Yeah, that's... Uh Whenever you've got all those different threats, that's why you win football games and South Atlanta Conference championships. So a run right up the middle for the Bears down to the 40-yard line once again, and there's Devin Woodson with the stop. Devin Woodson, a Kasida Academic All-District first team last year, D2 ADA honor roll, sack and AD honor roll here at Tusculum. Well, from my standpoint, I'd quite honestly just be happy to see the little run keep continuing to run the ball right up the middle yeah. for the rest of the day here. They don't need to be throwing and passing and running out of bounds. Good to have Jackson Cawthon back in the game as well for the Pioneers. This will be Amin Stevens with the hole opening at the 35. 30, 20, 15, 10. Ramel Fields saving a touchdown for the Pioneers. Just a solid, solid run by the Bears there. Whenever you've got somebody that's low and fast and powerful like that, they can hit blockers and take them with them. He'll take the ball down to the 11-yard line where it'll bring up a first down and a 10. I think just outside of the 10 it is. So first and 10, eight minutes to play. And on third down, the seventh conversion on third downs and 10 attempts for the Bears today. So bunch sets and a handoff to a new running back in the game. And this will be Trey Luttrell, a freshman out of Gainesville, Georgia. And he gets down inside the 10 to about the 9. I still keep trying to – right, right here, the Pioneers on the replay are just now punting, and we didn't get to see how close Cantrell was to going out the back of the end zone because he ran out the side of the camera. <laughs> Jace Jordan is in to the contest. Bell in the backfield as the feature back for the Bears. Willingham to pass – or actually, pardon me, to hand off to Jace Jordan who took the, the uh, handoff right from the uh, snap. And he tried to get around the corner. He could not. Good pursuit by the Pioneers' defense that time. Ivan Hogan's and Solomon uh, Hunter there on the stop for the Pioneers. Willingham did a good job of selling the fact that he was going to pass there because yep. you said it. I yep. thought it. I was looking. I was like, where is he going to throw to? Under seven to play in the third. 38-7. to seven. Lenore Ryan leading with third down and six coming up for the Bears. C.J. Bartley, a career-best 10 tackles already in this game. Not in there at the moment. Willingham out of the gun to pass. He's under some pressure. He's going to be sacked. Jackson Cawthon gets back there along with Taylor, and the Pioneers get to uh, Willingham for only the second time this season, but both times he's been sacked in this game. Uh, you know, big play there by the Pioneer defense. Kind of get themselves pumped up. You can see these guys celebrating a little bit. It is fourth down now. Lenore Ryan's being forced to kick a field goal. From the 25, a 35-yard effort for all ball. Seven of 11 in the field goal department this season. Already one for one today. Made a 21-yarder. All ball's kick is on the way. And this one is no good. Missed it wide to the right. So he pushed it to the right. And the Bears are turned away thanks to the sack by the Tusculum Pioneer defense led by Jackson Coffin. Hello, my name is Jacob Faith, and I'm the Dean of the College of Business at Tusculum University. I'm proud to share with you that the programs in the College of Business received accreditation through ACBSP in December of 2018. The Accreditation Council for Business Schools and Programs accredits business schools and programs worldwide 
This accreditation elevates our programs to the top programs worldwide. <laughs> yeah. So the Pioneers have it first and 10 at the 20. And it will be Weesmore who will be in relief in this game. Hunter Weesmore, the junior out of St. Cloud, Florida, will come in for the Pioneers. Maurice Gamillion will run, and he'll have some daylight at the 25 to the 30 to the 35. And the biggest daylight of the game in the running game for the Pioneers comes to Maurice Gamillion. You know, big play there. Almost got the Pioneers back up to positive yardage in the running game. <laughs> yeah, almost. Almost. They were minus 15. So that does put them right at zero but they're not quite positive yet. First down and 10 for the Pioneers. Their first first down of the second half as well. So the defense has sparked a little life maybe in the offense. As Hunter Weesmore will step back into the gun, he was instrumental in Pioneers' near comeback victory last year on the road against the Wingate Bulldogs, falling 16 to 12. Weesmore to pass, looking, and Deshaun Davis hit him in the wrong spot. The hands. Just dropped it right in the hands. It was a little behind him. Uh, he was in the air whenever it made contact with his hands. And I almost kind of wonder if he heard footsteps because there was a couple of Bear players closing in on him and he might have tightened up just a little bit and lost control of the football. Well, the Bears have gone to uh, some reserves in the linebacking core, but for the most part, the guys who started in the secondary are still out there. you still got Jaquan Artis out there and Dan Luba, so you've got your, your beef up front as well. Second down and 10 for the Pioneers, and the running game goes nowhere here, and that is going to be Quentin Hayes. He spent the better part of the day in the backfield. That'll be a loss of two. It's third down to 12. Now you can go from big plays to backwards. That doesn't uh, help you cause any kind of get your offensive uh, rushing game going. Gamillion had the 15-yard run, the longest running play of the game for the Pioneers, and now goes minus two. So third down and 12, A.J. Bellinger comes to the near side with Jake Moss and Dez Arthur. Chavis Williams goes to the far side. Ten seconds on the play clock. Weesmore will go empty backfield for the Pioneers as well as Deshaun Davis in the slot to the far side. Five wideouts with the snap. Weesmore rolls the pocket, looking and lobbing it downfield for Arthur, tries to make the one-handed grab incomplete, and it'll be fourth down for the Pioneers. Good attempt at getting football. Nice Arthur laid out, got one hand out. Did get his hand on the football, but unfortunately he was just so stretched out he couldn't pull it in. Fourth down and 12 for the Pioneers, and Cantrell will be on to punt the football once again. Closing in on a record for punts in a game. At least he's not punting out of the end zone this time. Not punting out of the end zone. Duggar is drifting back. He's standing at his 35. Another high snap. Cantrell does a nice job to catch it under some pressure. The punt is away, and it gets a pioneer roll inside the 40, inside the 35, and down at the 32-yard line. And really, kind of the miscues on our special teams with the high snap is really throwing off Duggar's opportunity to return. So much of life these days is rushing around from one place to another. Sometimes you just want to enjoy the journey on the way to the destination. And part of what makes it a little more enjoyable is an appreciation for the folks who help you get there. At Ingalls, we know that the people who send you on your way are the same ones who keep you coming back. I think you should take it for a spin. Are you serious? <laughs> Ingalls, all the ingredients for family. Tusculum University is Tennessee's first university. Established in 1794, Tusculum's beautiful campus is nestled in the foothills of the Great Smoky Mountains. Students from 31 states and 15 countries have found a home here. With nearly 60 areas of study, Tusculum can help you pioneer your path to success. Visit www.tusculum.edu or call 423-636-7300 to discover the pioneer experience for yourself.
find it here too. Invest in your nest and add value to your home. Come and see my popsy at Terry's Flooring on Kaiser Boulevard. You're listening to South Atlantic Conference Football, Tuscola versus Lenore Ryan with Brian Staten and... 38-7, Lenore Ryan, Andrew Cantrell punting for the eighth time. Of course, he was second all-time. Most, most punt yards he has against the LR Bears last year, 458 yards when he punted for 11 times. Today, just eight for 312. Handoff for not much right up the middle is Ryan Carter and the Pioneers, Ivan Hogan's and company with the stop. Big play for Hogan just to come through and make the uh, stop for the short gain against Lenore Ryan. Yeah. Ivan Hogan's all-region had a banner day. 14 tackles last year against the Bears. 175 tackles for his career. Second down and nine coming up for the Bears. Lining up to the right side will be Demarius Hampton. Out of that wing formation, out of the gun. Carter will get a carry to the right side. Actually, it's not. It's actually going to be Willingham who's going to keep it. Well, they fooled me twice here in this second half. And the Pioneer defense has answered the call. That's Ashton Watson for a loss of three on the play. Back to the 30-yard line as Willingham was going to be a runner there. Watson read that play very well and just went through, stayed, stayed with the quarterback and made the sack. Just absolutely full thought Carter had it on a little jet sweep to the right side, which had plenty of daylight over there, but that was not the uh, play call. And Ashton Watson, the graduate student here at Tusculum, comes up with that stop. So lining up to the right side, Ryan Carter this time as the wide out. Two tight end set. Willingham back to pass, a little pump fake, rolling the pocket to the right. Rolling, rolling, now running. And running up to the 35 and up to the 39-yard line before he's taken down. It'll be fourth down and two. And another stop by Ashton Watson, who runs the quarterback down. And the Bears special teams, the punt team, will be out for only the second time today. Only the 13th time this year. You know, you really, if this is a closer game and they needed the points, I would almost think Lorraine probably wouldn't punt here because they know they can get that amount of yards. But in this situation, they decide to go ahead and punt and just put the ball back to Tuscan with two minutes remaining here in the third quarter. Northview High School's Michael Owen, two punts from Duluth, Georgia. Good snap. Pioneers came after it. And D. Alford says, get away from it. It's going to hit short of the 20 and then get a bare roll inside the 15 to about the 13-yard line. So first down and 10 for the Pioneer offense. The first date. Only one chance to make that first impression. Don't worry, this might be new for you, but Ingalls has been there before. From flowers to the freshest ingredients, we have everything you need to put your best foot forward. I'm so sorry. Remember, you can't get to happily ever after. So Hunter Weesmore, we call him Weezy, back into the uh, contest at quarterback for the Pioneers. He'll come out of the gun with four wideouts in the formation this time. And this pass is high, intended for Des Arthur and incomplete. And he had some room to run if he's able to catch that in stride. As it is, second down and 10. And to finish up that penalty situation, Unfortunately, and it kind of goes hand in hand, but the Pioneers also have more penalties, 11, than they do points, 7. Yeah. Just the 34th play of the game. The Pioneers have done such a good job in time of possession this year, leading the league that way, 35 minutes a game. That's just not the case today. Too many three and outs. Bears trying to disguise their uh, coverage and looking to go deep and just headhunting as Jordan Shippey on a wheel route out of the backfield was double covered that time. That one is incomplete. And really what the Bears did, they rolled into zero coverage, which means no one in the middle. Then they rolled that over right as the play was snapped. And they did a nice job disguising that secondary coverage for an incompletion. Well, not quite honestly, they would probably had the interception if the two little round defenders hadn't run into each other. And if they were more concerned about picking it off, they're, I think, more concerned about delivering the big blow. So it's third down and 10. And the Pioneers 0 for 9 on third down today. Weesmore to pass, looking. Pocket breaks. And Weesmore goes down at the 11-yard line for the sack. And the Bears get yet another stop on defense. Now here we're going to have another situation where the Pioneer punt teams um, 
coming back on the field. And if Cantrell, he might be right at the goal line if we're lucky instead of having to punt out of the end zone. This will be the ninth punt of the day for Cantrell. Again, he was very busy last year, 11 punts. Single game record, 458 58 yards. Not close to that at this particular moment. Kyle Duggar standing at the 43-yard line of the Bears. Good snap this time. Cantrell with the rugby style. And it'll be fielded at the 38-yard line. Nice job by Duggar to come up and field that punt. It'll be first and 10 for the Bears at the Tusculum 30. the numbers that they've been scoring, Tuscombe's defense has kind of limited their offense. All right, a little counter play this time and uh, trying to rip the ball away. It was Malik Goodman, and he almost had it. Ivan Hogan's was there on that stop defensively as Rajah Bradley carried it for a gain of about a yard. And I do know that that is searching for a small consolation. Small consolation just to say, well, they didn't score as many as they did last week because you're still losing 38-7. to seven. No, they're averaging 49.8 points a game. Uh, you know, that's top five in the country. This is a, this is a good offense. Willingham will come out of the gun. It'll be Bradley lining up behind him. This time they will hand it off to uh, Carter on a jet sweep, and he's got some – he's gotten the corner. He's beaten contained, and he gets down inside the 20 to the, about the 16-yard line. But there is a penalty flag about where I said he oh, broke oh, contain oh, on oh, the oh, corner oh, at about the 31-yard line. We'll be able to see a situation here where it will be a holding against the Bears. Three pioneers into double figures and tackles today. Hogan's with 10, Cawthon with 10, Bartley with 10. Bartley a career day, equaling Cawthon's career day. So a block below the waist going against the Bears for the second time in the game. <laughs> Five seconds to play in the third quarter. Now, that's the thing. We're talking about these career days for guys. There's still 15 minutes of football played. We're, we're talking like this is the fourth quarter. It's not. It's just the end of the third. <laughs> 400 yards for the, bar, the Bears. The penalty for them, at the uh, fifth of the day. And that will take us to the end of the third quarter. So it is the end of three, and it is all Lenore Ryan. We go to the fourth with your score. Eighth-ranked Lenore Ryan, 30. We are in Granger County, Tennessee, here at Pierce Farms, and uh, the Pierce family has been working with Ingles for over 30 years. It means a great deal supplying uh, produce as a local farmer. Uh, it really touches base knowing that we're just simple people just trying to help and we love what we do and Ingalls is a huge part of helping us do it. Farming is who we are and it's in our blood. God has really blessed us with the sun and the soil to grow the best tomatoes you'll find anywhere. <laughs> I believe it's really in the soil. So if you're in Granger County and you farm tomatoes then you're, you're in. <laughs> just a great blessing on us to actually farm and be able to farm and to supply tomatoes to people and Ingalls really cares about family farms like Pierce Farms, and they really care about their customers. We're just glad to be a part of that. God has blessed us with a really great partnership there. They make fresh local produce have real meaning for lots of people. I'm Shane Pierce, and this is my Ingalls story.
I think there was one touchdown in the game. So we start the fourth, second down and 20 for the Bears, and they run the fullback dive to Bradley, and Ivan Hogan's with his 11th tackle, helped out by Colton Strickland right there for a gain of about three or four. Mm -hmm. Amin right. Stevens, who's had three touchdown r touchdowns Welcome in this Hogan game, Hogan had a banner day last year against the Pioneers with a career-best 163 rushing yards against Tusculum, including a 73-yard rush. Might have the rest of the day off. You know, three touchdowns is pretty good, buddy. You're done. Yeah, yeah, you know, go ahead and rest up. You're talking about UVA-wise, I honestly remember 19th, the last game of the 1998 season, we were up there more. Yeah. Because it was still in the old uh, high school stadium and it yep. was snowing that day. It's freezing. In the concrete stands. Throwing off his back foot was Willingham. He had a man open as he was looking downfield for Brooks. It's incomplete. And it's fourth down as Colton Strickland applying the pressure that time on Willingham. So fourth down coming up. And Lenore Ryan sending his putt unit back on once again. So fourth down coming up and for the Pioneers. Chance to get the football back. Alford will stand at the 10. Owens is in to punt the ball away for the third time here in the game. Good snap. Owens gets away a low spinner, and Alford has to come up on a knee and make the catch at about the 17-yard line. But a nice job by D just to... wise at Newberry and in the late game tonight limestone at Winget with a 6 p.m. kickoff first and 10 for the pioneers from the 17 Weesmore back in at quarterback and Jordan Shippey on his right shoulder a little play action pass for Bellinger complete at the 30 Milliken there on the stop after a gain of 15 yards first and 10 for the pioneers nice pick up there for pioneers uh, had basically three big plays of the day, two 15-yarders and then the big touchdown. So at least uh, they are showing that they're still coming out here trying to play. Fourth quarter and the Bears leading 38-7. to It'll be Williams and Moss to the far side. Bellinger to the near side. Mangle the tight end to the near side as the Pioneers go right to left on your radio. Weesmore from the gun. Shippy on his right shoulder. And this will be Weesmore with a uh, pick, a pull, and a, a one of those run pass option zone read things. And Weesmore gets one yard. Got one yard and got hit pretty well. Yeah. I'm pretty sure right about the time he decided to keep that ball, he realized that this was the best decision I could have made. <laughs> that was the wrong decision. Miles Jackson, a freshman from Louisville, Georgia, out of Jefferson County High School, the same high school of that of the starting quarterback this year, Bryce Moore hailing from. Second down and nine for the Pioneers at the 33. 38-7 Bears. Here comes the blitz. Picked up by Shippey. And then Weesmore dancing around. And a, are they going to rule this a fumble? No, it's an incomplete pass. There was absolutely no one in the area. They're going to say it may have been uh, tipped as it was thrown. So that's the... Uh, Benefit for the Pioneers who are still looking to pick up their first third down conversion of the day now, facing third down at nine. There, as another one, Pioneers might have got the benefit of the doubt there because, quite honestly, that wasn't if a throwing motion. It was just the ball went, it flew out of his hand. <laughs> With it, he happened to have his arm raised and the ball flew out of it. Well, not a whole lot of uh, double-digit plays for the Pioneers today. 80-yarder was spectacular, longest of the day. Comes the blitz. Weesmore takes a hit as he lets the ball go, complete to Torrey Ponder at the 45. Ponder makes a man miss, gets up to the 50 and taken out of bounds. First and 10 for the Pioneers. First third down conversion of the day. Comes with 12.38 to play in the game. Well, you know, there again, we're, we're searching for positives. That was a positive. They finally converted third down on a big play. Right at midfield. Pioneers moving. Weesmore stood in the pocket and took a hit as he delivered it. But Weesmore out of St. Cloud, uh, St. Cloud, Florida, St. Cloud High School. We'll step back to the line of scrimmage, and this time we'll go under center. 
Last year against Wingate, went 7 for 17. Toss, Shippy dropped it, and is lucky to fall back on top of it for the Pioneers as never saw that ball in. We've had an issue when we have gone with the toss this year to the running backs. They haven't been able to pull it in. Well, and that one just – it almost looked like the ball was in slow motion in, in midair. It was sort of just like – it wasn't really a toss with authority as much as it was just sort of a heave in its general direction. Well, they were tossing it back into the wind. That might have affected <laughs> it a little bit. Loss of six on the play, so another loss in rushing yards for the Pioneers. Pioneers have thrown for 150 yards. Weesmore to pass again. Pressure right up the middle on a stunt. Looking downfield, back shoulder, and Bellinger cannot extend to catch the ball. As actually was being held there, but they didn't catch it. So to bring up a third down and 16 for the Pioneers. Yeah, let's see if the Pioneers can make it two third down conversions in a row. So Williams will come in for the uh, Pioneers. Next week, the Bears get the Eagles of Carson Newman, who just put up 59 points today on Catawba. Tuskillum breaks the huddle. Third down and 16 for Tusculum. Weismore backs into the gun. Five seconds on the play clock. Four wide outs with Jordan Shippey on his right shoulder. With the snap. Good protection. Steps away. Delivers the pass. And this one downfield incomplete. Penalty flag thrown in the backfield. Weismore took a hit as he delivered it. And I believe the, f the penalty will be a hold against the Pioneers, which will be negated on the incompletion. Yeah, because it was definitely not – it was holding on the Pioneer. I knew it wouldn't be uh, hitting Weesmore because the flag um, came out while the play was still developing. And Weesmore took the hit as he threw it too, so it was in the act. Keedy on Broadwater was back there trying to defend his quarterback the best as, as he could. The all-region last year, second team all-region, second uh, – third team all-region at Football Gazette, first team all-conference, AD honor roll. Keedy on Broadwater – a senior, a four-year starter for this Pioneer team. Snap to Cantrell is a good one, and this time Duggar asking for a fair catch and fields it on the line drive at the 21-yard line where the Bear offense will take over first and 10, leading 38 to 7. Well, we knew coming into today's game. Hello, my name is Jacob Faith, and I'm the dean of the College of Business at Tusculum University. I'm proud to share with you that the programs in the College of Business received accreditation through ACBSP in December of 2018. The Accreditation Council for Business Schools and Programs accredits business schools and programs worldwide. This accreditation elevates our programs to the top programs worldwide. Elizabeth in Tennessee is wearing Bryce Moore's number 17 today. And I thought, surely to goodness Bryce Moore is not out there warming up. So I saw 17 warming up, but it was actually Carter Everett. Yeah, so. and I mean, that's a situation in, in college that you, you run into. Numbers are kind of fluid as, as they're needed if somebody goes out, even if it is a starting quarterback. Well, we're going to put somebody else in that shirt on Saturday. And I wonder if it's just a decoy. It definitely fooled me. Um, but I noticed that, you know, your helmet number's there, and Carter's helmet number is 42. All right, we got a new quarterback into the game for the Lenoride Bears. This is Gunnar Anderson, the sophomore out of Alexander Central High School, one of our great basketball players of all time, uh, coming out of Alexander Central High School. And the name just – I mean, I'm sitting there looking at him. I see his face, and then, boom, right over my head. I can't help you on this one. And I see him at the game. He was part of Mike Hollowell's Fab Five recruits uh, with Shane Banks. I did see Doug DeBus can talk to him a minute ago. Handoff up the middle on third down and six, and the Pioneers get another big stop as Jackson Coffin with his career best 11th tackle on the game comes up with that stop. It's a three and out for the Bears. Yeah, it is. I'm so, so mad at myself right now. <laughs> I'll say I, I, I saw a, a Doug. He was one of Mike Hollowell's players. So, but not I heard, him. I know it's not, <laughs> that's not who you're talking about. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. He's, let, he's a lot taller than Doug. But then again, most are. Owen oh, to come in to punt the ball away. D. Alford standing at the 29-yard line. 
Bartley applying some pressure. Wobbly kick, offered fair catch at the 37 yard line, which is where the Pioneer offense will take back over with 9.13 to play in the football game. But it is just absolutely right now over my head. Under center is going to be Wiesmore. Moss will go in motion across the formation. Three-step drop slant complete to Ponder. Who made one man miss, but did not make Eric Jackson miss after a gain of four up to the 42-yard line. Second down and six coming up for the Pioneers. We can do like six degrees of separation on this because Ralph Horn is taller than Doug DeBusk. <laughs> <laughs> he is one of the probably five best players that Tuscombe's ever had. Uh, we saw him today. He coached with uh, Mike Hollowell, so. Ralph's got his number retired hanging in the, ra in the rafters. It's still not helping me remember his name. <laughs> 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 I'm going to go to this page here. I'm going to search it. Second down and six from the 42-yard line. And Pioneers looking to go deep. Wiesmore to Moss, and that play nicely defended in the secondary by Landon Scott, the team captain for the Bears. It was certainly a, uh, a good pass by Wiesmore. Unfortunately, it's just the defense got there and was able to, to break it up. I don't think that's what you want. That doesn't help me any. It did say, it said alumni directory. I'll go to the record books. Go to the record books. That'll help me. Third down and six coming up for the Pioneers. I'm just going to sit right here and go through these people. Wiesmore to pass, looking for Bellinger complete. He has it complete at the 50, and if we had targeting earlier in the game, right, there's another candidate for targeting as he took a hit right to the head. But it's first and 10 for the Pioneers. Yeah, either way, the Pioneers getting the first down. They're actually moving the ball into Lenore Ryan territory for the first time in a while. All right, so it was during that era of uh, Shane Banks, Tim McPhail, Brandon Reed, and Jeremy Fortner. There he is, right there. I remember Jeremy. Jeremy Fortner, for a crying out loud. Sorry, Jeremy. The pride of Central Alexander High School. First and 10 for the Pioneers. Wiesmore, pass across the middle is going to be incomplete, intended for Deshaun Davis. He had it, and for the second time of the game, he dropped it. Thought it was going to be a good completion there for the Pioneers. He had to try to lay out whenever they made contact to the ground, it bounced loose. It's funny to see all these guys. Hey, basketball season is just around the corner. And I'll say this about JT Burton. He's got his basketball guys out here working the games. They're out delivering the food for the prep of the, uh, the concession stands and for tailgates, which was not very active today, by the way. A lot of these guys really – Pat Compton's picture in this alumni directory, hilarious. Wiesmore on second and ten to pass. Has a man open, ponder, complete at the 35-30, and he has it inside the 30 to the 25-yard line. Kyle Duggar helping on the stop and a big gainer for the uh, Pioneers as they'll pick up close to 20 yards on the play. That's the second biggest play of the day for Tesla, I'm sure. Yeah. So first and ten, seven and a half to play, and some life, a little movement by this Pioneer offense against some of the backups on that defensive line, although Jaquan Art is still in the game for the Bears. Still with pressure, Wiesmore lets one fly for Williams, a little back shoulder, and he could not adjust to the football. Defensively, Ivan Milliken never located the ball, and if Williams can just stop, he has a touchdown. He couldn't. It's incomplete. And play now second and ten for the Pioneers, ball on the 26-yard line. The Bill Lorch picture is great, too. See that down there? Bill Lorch. Down there? Yeah, that is, that's that's, great. That is Bill, if I ever saw him, a little bit younger. Yeah, Ralph Horn picture all the way up there. That <laughs> is. My goodness. Second down and 10 for the Pioneers at the 26. LR leading the game 38-7. to seven. We're going to run it to Gamillion to the right side. Kevion Broadwater trying to uh, 
open up a hole. He just landed on one of the would-be uh, rushers for the LR Bears, and uh, Gamillion will get inside the 25 to the 24, gain of about two. So it's third down and eight. Bill Orch, uh, another one of those from that time period, along with John Iskamp, Tony Kostanka, Angelo yeah. Botta, they all were recruited in here to Tusculum and decided to stay locally, and we're glad they did. Coach C here last week during the 50th celebration, 50th anniversary of Pioneer Soccer. Third down and eight from the 24-yard line. Deepest penetration of the second half for the Pioneers and really sustained a pressure for the Pioneers. Here comes an all-out blitz, and this pass is incomplete. The Bears brought everybody. There had to be somebody open. It's incomplete, and it's fourth down. Well, Weasmore didn't have time to see if anybody was open or not because he was just in <laughs> scramble mode and getting rid of the football. Pioneers have really helped the Bears' rushing stat. 62 yards allowed. They're going to improve on that. They could end up being the best rushing defense in the country. Tunchkill right now, minus five yards rushing. My key stat today was Tuscola must run the football. Shippy had minus five yards individually last year against this Bear team. And they were going to have to be really good today to be able to run the football. And again, they just have not been able to do it. One touchdown here in the second half, and it belongs to the Lenore. We are in Grange County, Tennessee here at Pierce Farms, and uh, the Pierce family has been working with Ingalls for over 30 years. It means a great deal supplying uh, produce as a local farmer. Uh, it really touches base knowing that we're just simple people just trying to help, and we love what we do, and Ingalls is a huge part of helping us do it. Farming is who we are, and it's in our blood. God has really blessed us with the sun and the soil to grow the best tomatoes you'll find anywhere. <laughs> I believe it's really in the soil. So if you're in Granger County and you farm tomatoes, then you're, you're in. <laughs> Just a great blessing on us to actually farm and be able to farm and to supply tomatoes to people. And Ingalls really cares about family farms like Pierce Farms, and they really care about their customers. We're just glad to be a part of that. God has blessed us with a really great partnership there. They make fresh local produce have real meaning for lots of people. I'm Shane Pierce, and this is my Ingalls story. 23 is when they would start football at Anderson. Well, it would be good if to get an up, one more football playing team. We've got nine teams, ten make it for an even uh, fall Saturday to full conference games. Before this play, timeout was asked for by Little Ryan. So they called timeout. So on the D1 football scoreboard today, in case you've been uh, kind of checking in and out and you've missed some scores, we can tell you. Tennessee won today. They beat Mississippi State. You heard Joe talk about the South Carolina shocker in Athens. Stunning Georgia, 20-17 to in two overtimes. Meanwhile, Alabama has just scored a touchdown to draw even with Texas A&M. They're tied at seven in that contest. Michigan won earlier today, and Oklahoma, and what do they call that, the Red River Clash? Yes. There was about some Red River flowing before the game, apparently. The two teams got into it during pregame warm-up. Every player was issued. Told if you get another one, that would be considered your second and you're ejected. Yeah, and you're done. So uh, they were on their best behavior, and the game was apparently a great one. It was 34-27, Jalen Hurts and the Oklahoma Sooners with that win. So a little bit of your D1 scoreboard. We've given you our D2 scoreboard in the conference. Carson Newman put up 59 points today on Catawba and held them to just 14. So LR and Carson Newman next week. And we will see Catawba in uh, three weeks. Yep. In that three-game homestand for the Pioneers. And then the final game of the year on the road to Carson Newman. So fourth down and eight from the 24 after two timeouts have been called. Wiesmore comes back out of the gun. Gamillion on his right shoulder. Four wideouts in the formation. Ten personnel. Wiesmore looking, looking. Has some time. Complete to Des Arthur, who breaks a tackle and then lunges for the 15-yard line. And maybe his knee went down at the 17, so he lost yards after he made the catch. And it will be first and 10 for the LR Bears at the 17. Yeah, it looked like the Pioneers were going to get the first down out of that situation. Didn't. Spot got changed, and now LR has the football. 
So the Lenoran Bears get a stop on fourth down against the Pioneers. But a pretty nice drive, nonetheless, for Tusculum here late in this contest. Looking for any building block. And again, Joe, the, the toughest start to a, a Pioneer season. I, and I, you and I have done this a long time. There's no question this is the toughest start that they have ever had in a football season. Uh, certainly since the uh, Division Two era. I do remember it was Dwayne Wells' last year. They went pretty deep in the season before picking up their first victory. It's just, well, I guess the strength of schedule. I, yeah. I guess. Oh, oh, yeah, that's the, certainly part, yes. That part, and you know, and Delta State went to three and one. I think they're three and two now. And West Alabama's dropped two games this year, which surprises me a little bit. They were shut out by almost by North Greenville last week, so that's a little surprising. Um, after Delta State demolished North Greenville in Greenville, South Carolina, hmm. so that was or what are they called Tigerville, Tigerville, South Carolina. So that was a bit surprising to me. That, that particular score. So West Alabama obviously didn't have everything on all cylinders. But then you've got 5-0 and Wingate and now 5-0 and LR coming in here today. And the only teams with losing records the Pioneers have played, Newberry and Limestone. Jet sweep handoff is fumbled. And falling back on top of it will be Trey Luttrell. A loss of about four on the play to bring up a third down for the Bears. Mm -hmm. And then that strength of schedule. I, I, surely this is the first time that Tuscan has had to play three nationally ranked teams this early in the season. Well, and to go 0 and 3 at home, and you know a place where Tusculum has had a lot of success here in the friendly confines of Pioneer Field with 29 seasons here at Pioneer Field itself, and and they have always found a way to get wins here at home. But my goodness, this is again one of the uh, toughest. Starts here at home, three nationally ranked teams that you're going to play here at home. Here on third down and long, and Anderson will hand it off, and not much right up the middle against this Pioneer defense. Colton Strickland, Jackson Cawthon right there for the Pioneers. So we are going to see Laura Ryan's punt unit come on once again. Bears will be punting with the ball spotted at their own 16-yard line, so the Pioneers might have an opportunity to get a good return here if the LR punts to them. Yeah, if they are able to do that. Tusculum against ranked opponents, just 13-33 and 33 all time. The last win against a nationally ranked team was that 12th-ranked Wingate unbeaten team that came in here in 2017 when the Pioneers got that win. Owen to punt it away, season high and punts in a game. Alford runs up, asks for a fair catch in Bear territory and fields it at the 47. Pioneers with three home games remaining. I'll miss the next one, the UVA Wise, uh, or pardon me, the uh, game after UVA Wise, yeah, Pembroke. Pembroke. So uh, 
hopefully the Pioneers will be able to pick up that first win. And if they do, I might not be welcome back. <laughs> Deep pass, jump ball for Bellinger, incomplete. A little hand fighting both ways there, and Bellinger just unable to bring it in. But I like that odd. Just give your playmaker a chance to uh, go get the football. That's incomplete, second and ten. Although I would point out if you're going to play hooky for a game, you should do it on a game at UNC Pembroke. Yeah, <laughs> not, not whenever they not come the in. the home game. Well, I thought I was going to get off the hook to Newberry, by the second longest road trip of the year, but that didn't happen. T. Tusculum in their 29th season here at Pioneer Field are 78 and 63 all time. That doesn't count the two games we played over at Burley Stadium. Weesmore to pass, slant complete, Chavis Williams 40, 35, and he'll take it down to the 33-yard line for a first and 10 pickup of 14. Just about got his head ripped off being taken down by the face mask there, but... Uh, Nobody really seemed to be too concerned about it. Three and a half to play. Yeah, we'll let that one go. We've, come, we've thrown the penalty flags a bunch today is what the officials were saying, and they have. Wiesmore working out of the gun quickly. Comes to the line of scrimmage, and he's got a man complete. That's uh, wide open complete to Des Arthur inside the 20, down to the 17. If Arthur is able to keep his feet, he may score there. But he doesn't. He goes down right as he catches it. Wide open. 16 penalties thrown today. 17 penalties thrown today. 16 accepted. 11 against the Pioneers for 131 yards. At least now they are moving up more offensive yards than... Weesmore looking into the end zone for Jake Moss. Caught it. Touchdown, Pioneers. Hunter Weesmore with the touchdown toss from 18 yards, finding Jacob Moss... And the Pioneers on the board. That ball is just a bullet. Weesmore standing back in the pocket. Uh, Moss moving up. Must be sort of like a post route coming back into the middle of the field. Just dead strike to him in the end zone. It did a nice job looking off the defense, too. He looked right, and then he looked back to the left and threw a dart to Jacob Moss, who makes the catch for the Pioneers' second touchdown of the game. And looking pretty good against some of the reserves for LR. Shepherd's point out of the hole that Dylan DeBusk is up and good. 301 to play in the football game. We go back to a break right after this. 301 left. It's LR 38, Tusculum 14. Pioneer football will continue after this on the Pioneers Sports Network. Family. Food's here! What's it mean to you? To us, it means the people you care about, look out for, and yeah, love. Even if you'd never let them hear you say it. Hey, you're eating hummus? What's wrong with hummus? Here at Ingalls, we have everything you need to gather around the table and give each other a hard time. Because that's what families do. Ingalls, all the ingredients for family. Hello, my name is Jacob Fate, and I'm the... With 3.01 left, and the Bears who have had their backups on offense and a few backups on defense. And the Bears are going to call a timeout as the Pioneers adjust it as if they might kick an onside kick. And Drew Cronick says, you know what, I'm still coaching this game. Drew Cron how impressive is that? That's impressive. You know, LR had gone through a couple of years where they were at the, the Kings of the Mountain, then they kind of fell off for a couple of years with the coaching change. And then Drew Cronick comes in. He didn't have you know, a great amount of what I would say swagger going into one year with the success. It's not like he took over a team that was just outstanding, but he had a lot of pieces like Kyle Duggar, like Willingham that he had to use at his disposal, like these running backs that they have had, Jaquay Mitchell being one of them uh, that's been good, but they rotate so many. But man, Joe, this is his 20th game. He's getting ready to win his 18th game at LR. Well, you know, it wasn't that long ago that Laurel Ryan finished second in the country. They were in a Division II National Championship yep. game. Came up just short of actually winning the first ever team national championship for the South Atlantic Conference. Yep. Uh, 
and then they had coaching departure go to Houston. Went to the Citadel, I believe. Is it's either Citadel or Coastal Carolina. I don't remember which. Now he's, I think it's at George Mason. Uh, so he's made his way. Up. I mean, the, the whole staff went with him. Yeah. Um, then they brought in, like I said, it's been a couple of years of. Eh, it was okay football. It wasn't great. They tried to revamp this offense, and Drew Chronic says, "Listen, I got a good system at Reinhardt." And I'm going to bring it to LR and do the same things you were doing. And, boy, I tell you what, it's phenomenal. Well, it's an onside attempt by the Pioneers out of the timeout, and LR had adjusted, and they put the hands team out there. And what's so difficult with the onside kick in college We did recover one against Limestone. But what's so difficult is you can't get a running start anymore. No. And you can't necessarily overload one side anymore. So it's difficult to get an onside recovery. And the LR Bears recover this with 2.58 to play in the game. But this LR team certainly has come a long way since 18 or 20 years ago when then head coach Wayne Hicks told you and I that their season goal for Lenore Ryan, what was they going to do, Brian? We're going to block a punt. He said, our goal this season, we want to block a punt. <laughs> We're gonna, and they did. <laughs> they, they blocked three that year. Breaking a tackle in the backfield and then being driven backward by Jackson Cawthon. Nice job. <laughs> by uh, Jackson Cawthon. I thought I saw a flag go in, unless it was somebody's towel that just came loose, and that apparently is all it was. But on the uh, carry that time was Damian Devine. Jackson Cawthon is having a banner day today for the Pioneers. And uh, officially no gain, second and 10 there for Lenore Ryan. So the Bears were just letting their clock run out, 2.20 on the clock in county. Pioneers down 38-14. to C.J. Bartley, 13 tackles today. Cawthon, I think, will be credited with that tackle for his 12th, and Ivan Hogan's with 11. But the defense has been out there for a long, long time today. On the carry, Jackson Cawthon in on yet another stop as Devine will take it across the 45 and down to the 43-yard line where it will be a third down coming up. And a Pioneer timeout for the Pioneer defense. And again, you want to do anything you can do to fight for your team, and that's what Jerry Odom is doing right now. I just wanted to give the Pioneer defense a chance to be successful, get a stop here on third down, maybe force Lenore Ryan to punt one more time so Tuscan can get the ball back with a little bit of time in its offense to work. When the game was afoot in that first half, for the most part, the Lenore Ryan Bears were six of nine on third downs which is quite remarkable. Since then, they've gone one for six, and that one they converted was on their touchdown drive in the third quarter when they had their starters in, when they opened up the game to 38-7. to seven. They've, slowed it down, they've slowed it down quite a bit since then, and a, a Pioneer team that... All right, so baby steps, positives. The first team to sack the, the Lenore Ryan Bear quarterbacks this year. Pioneers have done it today three times. However, the Pioneer running game has not taken flight, and penalties continue to uh, haunt the, this Pioneer team. I think that's the biggest thing that the Pioneers have to correct by next week is you can't have those penalties against UBA wise. This will be Gunnar Anderson on a, a quarterback keeper. Pioneers did a good job tackling everybody they saw. And it'll be fourth down for the Bears, and Jerry Odom will burn his final timeout with 156 left in the game. So a nice job in that backfield for the uh, Pioneers. They continue to fly to the football, and C.J. Bartley, Ivan Hogan, Xavier Clemens were all involved in that particular play. So let's look at it for the Bears. You've got a big showdown next week against Carson Newman with one loss in the league, and then you got the Red Hot Limestone Saints are on the road in Gaffney, and then the showdown November 2nd against right now unbeaten Wingate University before you close out the year with what appears to be Two wins, Pembroke and Catawba. But you've got the bulk of your schedule coming up with Carson Newman and Wingate in two of the next three weeks. Yeah, that's, that's going to be a tough stretch, and that's probably going to be the stretch that sorts out whichever team wins this year's South Atlantic Conference Championship. Meanwhile, for the Pioneers, all right, they're going to fall to one and five. So if you want to run the table and finish with the winning record, then you're going to have to run the table against teams like Virginia Wise, Pembroke, Catawba, Mars Hill, and then Carson Newman. So when you look at those schedules and their overall record, uh, those are winnable games. Uh, they are, and uh, the Pioneers certainly are going to do everything they can to come out and play well in those contests. 
So the Bears, out of this pioneer timeout, lined up to punt the ball away. And playing well started with just getting that 12th guy off the field. Exactly. <laughs> Did not need to get a penalty there. Pioneers don't really rush Owens, who tries to uh, get a little backspin. And Alford was run into by one of his gunners, his own his little friendly fire there, and he does a nice job catching the ball. I think he ran into Ramel Fields. Well, I think really it was more an issue of Fields was hit and knocked into him. All right, a minute 49 to play. Hunter Wiesmore with a little magic on that last drive. Now the question begs if Bryce Moore is not able to go. Has Wiesmore shown this coaching staff enough to maybe get the start next week? Yeah, that'll be an interesting uh, conversation. They'll have to decide once they break down the tape and look. And, 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 and here's the thing. Wiesmore, they, they're they high on him in practice. Uh, they like what he does in practice. It's just that it seems as if the two redshirt freshmen just kind of in camp just owned it. And Moore has kind of established himself. Wiesmore with some time in the pocket, going to let this one go deep, and it's going to be picked off. Maybe ill-advised into uh, triple coverage. Was looking for Tory Ponder, and that one is picked off right at midfield by Malik Taylor, sophomore out of Dry Branch, Georgia. And the Bears have it, and will have their sixth win of the year as well. No timeouts on the clock for the Pioneers, and basically the LR Bears can just take about three knees, and this one be over. No, uh, unfortunately, that last play for Wiesmore is going to factor yeah. into the decision that you were just talking about that the coaching staff have to make. Yeah, Ponder wasn't open. Uh, there was a lot of guys underneath. And I know you want to get a big chunk of yards. And, again, coaches have to say, we don't need to win the game on one play. Uh, and that does come into a, to play a factor. Gunnar Anderson will come out in what is the favorite play for most coaches, the victory formation. It was last night chatting with Barry Carter about that. And I was asking him how many times he went into the victory formation. And he says, all right, smart Alec. I went into it a lot going into halftime. <laughs> and, and, you know, not to crack on Barry uh, and certainly where he coached, but he went into it a lot on defense too. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> he saw it. Yeah. He, saw, he saw it executed a little bit more. <laughs> he, uh, he'll kill us for talking about that. And I'm sure he'll bring it up next week when we're with, with West Green in Irwin. Another road game, uh, so a minute to play, another kneel down for Anderson. He'll take it with one second. All right, so the take, give the pros and cons of this one. We've, we've touched on it already, and not to beat a dead horse, but if we have penalties like this every game the rest of the year, we're not going to win a lot of football games. No, actually, honestly, the penalties didn't factor heavily into today's outcome. Let's right. just be perfectly honest, it didn't. Next week, the same thing will cause the Pioneers to lose. Yeah. yeah, I mean, just you can't give up a penalty on third down when you're getting ready to get off the field and then commit a, a personal foul and sportsmanlike late hit or something like that, uh, that really does factor into this. The Lenoride Bears, under second-year head coach Drew Cronick, has built a uh, nice little dynasty in just a short amount of time, which they already had some uh, foundation, and Drew Cronick has just brought it to another level as he has won his 18th game in his 20th game coached. Last year falling in the quarterfinals after losing the first game of the year to nationally ranked West Florida, they lost to end the season. Well, they've won now 16 consecutive regular season games. And they have gone to 6-0 and on the year, out to a fabulous start. And they are at the top of the table right now by a half game, leading the Wingate Bulldogs who play later tonight at 6 o'clock at home. So the Bears take a bite out of the sons of Davy Crockett here today from Pioneer Field. That's your final. The Lenoron Bears 38 and the Tusculum Pioneers 14. We invite you to stay tuned for our Pioneer post game and a chat with Pioneer coach Jerry Odom and our stats and plays and highlights of the game coming up in our post game. That's when we return with more after this. You're and listening to Pioneer Football right here on the Pioneer Sports Network. <laughs> 